here with me. All right, so before I, I before I start, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Mulyati uh, from Center for Academic Excellence and Scholarship, University Technical Malaysia Melaka. All right, so again, welcome everyone. So today we are going to have our prominent speaker from University Putra Malaysia, uh, Prof. Dr. Zuriati Ahmad Zulkarnain. Okay. Alright, so yang lain ni, rakan-rakan lain tidur ke apa ni? <laughs> Alright, okay. So my academic, my fellow academic, so just now we had a very, uh, like, I and Prof. Zuriati uh, had a very simple, uh, I would say, um, discussion uh, regarding the topic today. So on top of that, I would like to actually express a concern from Prof. Zuriati, Prof. Zu, Prof. I can call you Prof. Zu? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Boleh. Ya. Yeah. Prof. Zu, Prof. Zu kata nak tengok muka rakan-rakan ni. Ah, nak tengok. So, kita nampak uh, Dr. Suzaimah. Suzaimah dah dah, dah berkongsi wajah-wajah kan. So, I would like to actually, you know, encourage all my friends here. Maybe you can just actually switch on your camera for a while. So, Prof. Zu bolehlah tengok-tengok. Mana tahu ada wajah-wajah kesayangan atau wajah-wajah yang <laughs> yang pernah dikenali oleh Prof. Zu kan. Okay. Uh. Alright, so we have about 23 participants, including myself, Prof. Zu, and I believe about two or three from, um, from a fellow members of CAIS also. Alright, okay, so we have Noor also. Okay, alright, so ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome everyone to this sharing session with Prof. Zuriati Ahmad. From uh, Zuk, from uh, uh, sorry, from Prof. Zuriati Ahmad Zulkarnain from University Putra Malaysia. Alright, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Abishrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wahlul udatan milisa niyaf kau kawi. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever actually we talk about supervisors or supervision, I believe that each and every one of us has been experienced to be supervised by our supervisors during our PhD um, journey or maybe. Uh, uh, degree or first, second degree journey. So now, wherever actually we, we venture into academic line, especially in University Technical Malaysia Melaka, I believe that most of us, including myself, okay, we have been exposed okay, to supervise our student, okay, either for PSM ke, although for uh, degree program or maybe for postgraduate program. All right. So I believe that each of us, we have the capability. We have the, uh, I would say, capability to to develop ourselves. Okay. Maybe it's from ourselves, or maybe from the motivation that we give to our student. All right. So, uh, so today is the topic. Okay. Therefore, we would like to actually welcome Prof Zuriati Ahmad again. Okay. Let me actually introduce a, about uh, Prof Zu. Uh, Prof. Dr. Zuriati Ahmad Zulkarnain is a professor at the Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology, UPM. Now, she is the Deputy Dean at the School of Graduate Studies, University Putra, Malaysia. For your information, Prof. Zu received her PhD in the area of quantum computing from University of Bradford, UK in 2006. Ah, lama dah tu. All right. So in terms of supervision, I can see that Prof. Zuretti had supervised a considerable number, a considerable number of students. Okay, either a graduate student, undergraduate student, and postgraduate student. All right. So in order to share her fruits of intellectual labors, Prof. Zuretti has published abundance of papers, uh, and also being a keynote speaker locally and also internationally. Right, so I hope that behalf of you know, uh, Center for Academic Excellence and Scholarship, we are going to, uh, you know, experience a sharing session from from Zuretti. All right. Okay. So, is there any question from the from the members on the screen or in the screen in the computer? I don't want to tell you. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen. Again, uh, maybe you can switch on your camera for a while. So, Prof. Zariati will actually see our face. Uh, okay, so this is not Monday blues. Uh, walaupun orang kata Wednesday blues ke Thursday blues. 
Alright, so thank you so much. Ah, dah? Ah, Dr. Shah, ha? Ah, Prof. Dr. Shah dalam kereta lagi, Prof. Melaka tengah hujan lebat ni, Prof. Hai, Dr. K.A. is also here. Okay, we have Dr. Zakia. We have uh, Dr. Azhar. Okay, and we have Dr. Rizal. And I believe that all of them will later switch on their camera afterwards. Alright, okay. Now, over to you, Prof. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Muliati. Um, Dr. Muliati Siddiq, as a Deputy Director, Academic Scholarship, uh, KAIS, yeah? uh, UTAM. Um, thank you very much for this invite for the invitation, um, um, and then the fellow of the um, you know uh, also considered as friends as well, yeah, because all of us are academician. No matter what, because somehow we are very new, yeah. And uh, somehow we are already, you know, uh, going to be sixty, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, we are academician, we are researcher. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafi anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlu qadat min lisani yafqahu qawli. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Uh, as uh, yeah, um, I have been uh, asked by Dr. Muliati. Actually, uh, it's supposed to be the our dean, yeah, the dean of SGS, but somehow uh, it's very, very uh, you know tight uh, event uh, at the uh, School of Graduate Studies UPM, and somehow uh, the dean asked me yeah, uh, to give uh, this uh, particular talk, and then uh, uh, Dr. Muliati also uh, contact me, and then uh, I believe I might share a little bit, yeah. Uh, because uh, this is uh, what we call it uh, the journey. Uh, that, uh, that means the title, that means the topic that need to be shared today is supposed to be the journey of supervisors from novice to expert. Okay. Um, of course, in terms of the title, it looks like wow, <laughs> how to be, uh, you know, from novice, it's supposed to be beginner and then um, from novice to expert. Um, yeah. If you look at to the topic, it looks like, wow, it needs to have kind of experience. You have to go through, uh, you know, a certain of timeline. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, um, I try to share whatever we have in UPM and then the experience that, uh, you know, that um, I exposed to. Right. Okay. Um, I prefer to have uh, the, uh, what we call it, uh, the talk is supposed to be uh, face to face so that. I managed to see uh, all of my friends, all right? Because right now I'm going to have new friends. So my new friends is actually uh, from UTEM. Uh, I supposed to be in UTEM uh, at the Faculty of uh, Computing Technology, something like that, yeah, because for the Viva as well as the uh, uh, computing program, because I'm also as the examiners of the program, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, I used to see uh, the nice campus of UTAM in Malacca, right? Uh, okay, so, but today, uh, a little bit, you know, uh, because uh, we have to see online, yeah? I prefer to have it face-to-face, -face, yeah? Okay, never mind, yeah? So, I think uh, the, the COVID, uh, if, even we're still in COVID, but somehow we have to adjust our new life, our new culture, yeah, our new activities in, in, in terms of uh, many, many aspects of our life, yeah. So we got to adjust, right? So basically, yeah, I may prefer to have uh, this kind of uh, discussion or talk, uh, two ways communication, yeah. Please, guys, if you have any issues, any opinion, I may let you to what we call it join, yeah, during uh, the, that means the seminar, yeah. Don't wait until the end of the slides, right? So I'm open, I welcome any of uh, opinion, yeah, uh, related to the topic today, right? So basically, the outline of uh, the topic today is. Uh, we should know, yeah, because as academician, yeah, no matter what, we have to be a researcher, yeah, for any particular faculty, yeah. So basically, uh, as academician, we are also a researcher, so called as a researcher, right? And then uh, we may be uh, what we call it uh, uh, asked yeah, to be a supervisor. So from that particular uh, perspective, yeah, we have to know what is supervision, 
right? And then why we need to do supervision? And then who are those people involved? Yeah. So basically, uh, for the basic uh, principle, we got to know what are the supervisors' role, right? And then followed by the researchers' role. Yeah. All right. And then, of course, uh, how, during the uh, studies, uh, we may take certain timeline, two years for master's, three years for PhD. So how, as a uh, supervisor, as a researcher, how we should manage the supervision, right? And then what happens if the things don't work at all as what we expected to see, right? Okay, is it clear, guys? Is it clear? All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Now, what is research? Okay. Okay. I would like to ask you, uh, do you have any uh, answer about research? What is research? Hmm. What is research? This is uh, what we higher thinking level. Yeah? <laughs> so, the LO learning outcomes of this question is supposed to be uh, C5, C4, right? So, what is the research? Yeah. Uh, that, that means the, the first uh, principle that we should uh, tell our mind is that research is about doing the thing which is involved the thinking. Yeah. So, it is a kind of thinking process. Okay. At the same time, it also a social process. We have to discuss, we have to refer, we have to cite, we have to communicate. So that is why we call it a social process. It is not we ourselves do it. Yeah, it's a matter involved the community. Yeah. And then um, research also discovery. Yeah. Uh, and so it can never be repeated because we could discover yeah, from A to B, B to C. Yeah? So that's why it can never be repeated. It's not B to B, it's not A to A, right? Okay. And then, uh, of course, as academician, yeah, uh, we also be considered yeah, given certain numbers, certain names yeah, of the students, yeah? Uh, who hosts as a postgraduate student, right? So at that time, we are considered as a supervisor or advisor or supervisory committee, right? Uh, so this is very tough, yeah? Once we are talking about research, yeah, it is not a uh, straightforward uh, answer, yeah? It's not kind of we are baking a cake, yeah? Baking a cake is very easy. We just prepare the ingredients and then put it in the microwave. And then just uh, wait until 40 minutes so we can have a good cake, nice cake, and we can eat the cake. But doing PhD, doing research, doing masters, it's not something that you have to wait for 40 minutes. It involves the process. Yeah? So how about this process? How long does it take? Uh, to, to go through the process, yeah? So that's why no matter what, as a researcher, as academician, there is no such, uh, what we call it, sentence about tiring, boring, yeah? <laughs> because this is our responsibility, yeah? Once we receive the offer letter as the offer letter DS52, right? As a senior lecturer of UTEM, uh, which is uh, considered as a UTEM lecturer. So, of course, we accept the offer. So, in the offer letter, there are certain responsibilities, yeah? In terms of teaching, in terms of supervision, yeah? Uh, so, we already being, uh, what we call it, uh, bounded with the university, yeah? As our employer. So, we are employee, but for the sake of, we are really, really love of doing research. Yeah, whatever we go, wherever we go, once it's a title as university, this is a center of what we call it a knowledge. Yeah, centers of knowledge. So we got to do research. Any question about research? Okay, this is a bit philosophy, but once we already have bind what we call it blend, yeah, uh, the principle of research from there, uh, we can foresee, yeah. 
what is the importance of being as a supervisor, right? So uh, now that is about research, yeah? Okay, based on the topic that been given today, it is about ourselves, yeah, our responsibility, yeah, that involve uh, as a supervisor, yeah. Uh, as long as we has we receive uh, the later from uh, school of graduate study yeah, at the university level, so we have been what we call it honored as the supervisor of any postgraduate students, yeah. So from there, you're supposed to be very proud that you might receive postgraduate students, right? Did you receive any letter about uh, supervising postgraduate students, guys? Hello, hello. Do you receive any of a letter to, to be as a supervisor from maybe school of graduate studies? Yeah, I don't know. Center of graduate studies, I don't know. You tell but somehow did you also did you supposed to receive any of a letter? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Yeah. So I think this is normal process everywhere. Yeah? Okay. So uh of course yeah, every semester we are looking forward to receive <laughs> this particular offer letter, yeah, as a supervisor. Yeah. Now all of us, yeah, uh, what we call it, um, honored, yeah, uh, because uh, we are uh, managed yeah, to obtain our PhD. So, my question, why we should be do our PhD? My question. So, even if we already obtained a PhD, yeah. So, my question is very easy. Why do you have to go for PhD? Adakah itu paksaan? Adakah itu kerana seronok-seronok? Adakah itu suka-suka? Adakah itu tanggungjawab? Yang mana satu jawapan dia? A, B, C, D. <laughs> A, paksaan. B, suka-suka. C, tak suka. D, seronok-seronok. Which one is the answer? Ada jawapan ke? A, B, C, D? Is there any answer? Lah, tak ada jawapan juga. Tak best lah macam ni. Okay. A, B, C, D. Ha. Semua di atas tu perang rasanya ni. <laughs> atas. <laughs> Semua di atas ya. Okay. So kita dipaksa lah sebenarnya. Dipaksa untuk buat PhD ke? Kan? We are forced to do PhD right? Ataupun memang we are um, you know from undergraduate lagi targeting PhD. Ada tak? Ada tak? Daripada sekolah mendengar lagi, saya memang nak ada PhD. Tak boleh cakap lah ada graduate ke master's ke. Saya memang nak ada PhD. Ada tak? Daripada sekolah mendengar lagi. Ada? Tak tahu. Tak tahu. Prof time sekolah mendengar ada kewujudan PhD tu. Waktu zaman saya tu lah tak tahu pun. Tak tahu kan? Tahu masuk universiti dah. Ha. Ha. Masa, masa zaman dulu uh, Setiap kali form 4, form 5 Kita hanya didedahkan uh, Our career development tu Adalah daripada cikgu kan Maksudnya you belajar ni You akan pergi universiti Lepas tu you jadilah apa <laughs> Jadi During that time very It's not structured career Pass lah Yang supposed to be You know exposed uh, During your Our form 4 dengan form 5 Ya yeah? as compared to our uh, apa tu our kids right now dia memang dah structured lah ya yeah, dia dah nampak what they are going to be ya yeah. tapi kita to say uh, during our apa during our time lah ya yeah, yang paling nampak yang we can foresee to do PhD lah at least during foundation or during matrix or during uh, what we call it uh, uh, persediaan to oversee something like that ya yeah. but before that memang kita tak ada lah ya yeah. And then yang tiba-tiba nak buat PhD uh, lepas habis uh, undergraduate pun ada yang ber, yang berminat oh mesti kena buat master dulu and then PhD. Okay that uh, aim is very good at least you uh, you know uh, that means it may take several times that means uh, it's a longer way yeah? it's a long way to go. 
Okay, dari segi pekerjaannya is going to be long way to go. You you could have explained to everybody that okay, saya nak buat PhD, uh, apa tu kalau tiga tahun, empat tahun saya tak habis, tak adalah PhD saya. No, you, you tak boleh nak cerita pun. You, you could not explain, right? So, what is the purpose of PhD sebenarnya? Walaupun kita dipaksa, kita suka rela. So, uh, we supposed to understand, yeah, the, the, that means the spirit of uh, doing PhD. Yeah. So the spirit is that yeah, the PhD student is patutnya become an independent researcher. Yeah. And then we are accomplish research which is publishable. So these are two concepts. Yang pertama kita nak buat research. So why kita finish the PhD we supposed to be an independent researcher. Yeah. So meaning that during our a uh, PhD, yeah. So we might be exposed. Uh, so during this kind of exposure, it depends on the culture that we have. We already been exposed, yeah. And then from that research, yeah, we supposed to accomplish the findings, yeah, which is publishable. Mungkin lah zaman dulu dulu kala is not really compulsory uh, to publish the findings, yeah. But the spirit of that is to get to the community and publicize the our work. Uh, so this is the spirit of Greek PhD, right? So biasanya after kita after we finish the PhD, then we know the objective of the PhD. <laughs> Before the PhD, we have not been asked to understand. To know the spirit of the PhD, but right now, uh, the, our postgraduate students are are fortunate because they have been informed from time to time. In fact, they've been equipped, yeah, with those uh, particular training, seminars, workshop about doing PhD and masters. Tapi zaman dulu memang tak ada training lah. Kalau dalam gelap pun kalau orang Melaka kata gagal dalam gelap something like that. <laughs> okay. So uh, so this is the spirit of PhD ya. Yeah? InsyaAllah. So kalau kita boleh hadam the spirit of PhD ni. So it might be uh, apa what, what we call it. Um, uh, ter, ter, apa uh, it might be in a soul ya yeah? as a academician ya. Yeah? So. Of course, here what we can say is that this is study process. Yeah. So the first thing is recruit. Ah, okay. The first thing is recruit because without doing the recruiting any PG, so there is no candidate. Okay. Number two is fulfill cost requirements. So I believe that every any every university is supposed to have certain courses requirements that the PhD student, master student need to uh, what we call register. And then uh, the, the best thing is that carry out research. Yeah, so the best thing is that carry out research. Uh, okay. Also a very, very, uh, what we call it, uh, sentimental thing is about document research by thesis and publications. This is involved the psychologies, yeah. Uh, that means our mental, yeah, and then our physical. How we can uh, cope with this uh, particular uh, uh, what we call it challenge, yeah, in order to come out with a thesis, a complete thesis, yeah, and publish. Okay, publish the articles. End up, and then it's going to be end up with a defending thesis, yeah. So again, this is very, very a uh, critical time, yeah. Because we don't know are we going to pass, yeah, during the defending the thesis or resubmission or fail, yeah, <laughs> during uh, defending the thesis, right? So of course, here yeah, the purpose of the uh, PhD and the process of doing PhD. PhD is very, very uh, crucial. Yeah, it's, uh, depends on the uh, timeline and then the research activities that need to be carried out. Yeah. Okay. Now, we supposed to understand about supervision. Once, yeah, we know the spirit, yeah, of a uh, process PhD process. Yeah, from there. The first thing about supervision is we should know what is supervision. What? Apa itu supervision? Yeah? 
Adakah supervision itu something that need to be freedom? We can supervise our PhD student at any time, at anywhere. Ya, yeah? Mengikut kesukaan hati kita. Kita rasa nak berjumpa student, kita jumpalah. Kita rasa tak nak jumpa sebulan, tak payahlah jumpa. Is that something like that about supervision? Ha. Siapa nak jawab? Anybody of you would like to say, oh, supervision is something supposed to be, you know, freedom. Yeah? Because we are democratic in the country, so everything is supposed to be democratized. Belum? Betul tak? <laughs> okay. Right. So, we should remember that doing PhD or master's is a process. Yeah. So, what does it mean by a process? So, in order to go through the process, yeah, we have to set a regulation, which is systematic regulation. It's supposed to be a standard systematic regulation, right? So, that's why we should understand what is supervision, yeah? In such a way that I mentioned to you, it's supposed to be a standard, yeah, a systematic uh, regulation, right? So it started like, yeah, so the supervisor is supposed to be ourselves as an academician, yeah, as a researcher, yeah. So basically, what we're supposed to do is that, yeah, um, as a supervisor, uh, we are um, considered as a person who has the eligibility, eligibility direct, yeah, and oversees the work of a junior. So in this case, what we can say that junior is supposed to be our PG student. So at least yeah, the supervisor yeah, already has at least three years experience doing PhD. So that's why we, we, we can say here that a supervisor is a person who directs and oversees the work of a junior. Okay, so uh, of course here it needs uh, supposed to be supported yeah, by the supervision management system. Okay, uh, at the same time, the supervisor may tailor all those experience yeah, throughout his PhD. Okay. Of course, throughout our juniors doing PhD, we have our own expectation as well as satisfaction. Ah, okay. Sama ada kita ada harapan, jangkauan, yeah, what we want to see from our junior, from our PG student. What is our satisfaction? Adakah kita belum, belum betul puas, yeah, while supervising our junior? Betul tak kita puas, yeah? Atau, or it just be uh, take for granted. Ah, tak apalah. Kita dah ada number. Ada DR kat depan tu. Kan, biarlah. Kan, so kalau dah DR tu, dah well known lah. Kan, <laughs> dah well known. Boleh jadi supervisor. Right? Uh, so, that's why yeah, we have to tell ourselves. Yeah, what are the best expectation? Okay, what happened with our satisfaction? Kita puas hati ke tidak during our supervision, yeah? as a supervisor. Keep asking ourselves, yeah? uh, sebagai senior pun, yeah? uh, dalam kes ini, me, myself, also always telling myself that I'm always in the learning process, yeah? even I'm senior. So, inilah bestnya di university because we are researcher, ha, kan? So, the university is central of knowledge. So that's why we keep on doing research. Uh, jadi, bila lah kita memang appreciate ourselves, yeah, obtain the PhD, we keep telling our, ourselves, no matter of what, yeah, I'm really satisfied myself yeah, as a researcher, as a supervisor. I want to be a good supervisor. I want to keep improve myself. Right? Uh, so this is what we should tell ourselves lah. Yeah, as human being born, of course, kita nak improve ourselves from time to time. Yeah, daripada lambat nak jadi cepat. Yeah, daripada slow nak jadi cepat sikit. Something like that lah. Yeah, uh, but uh, remember, it involves the process, right? Okay. Boleh lagi ke kawan-kawan? Sudah berat ke? 
<laughs> okay. Now, uh, from novice to expert, kita ni asalnya beginner sahaja. Yeah? Uh, of course, after three years we doing PhD, we feel like, oh, tak cukupnya ilmu aku ni. Yeah? Knowledge aku baru three years. Research work tu baru three years. Entah berapa conference baru aku pergi. Nak pergi conference pun bukan, bukan senang pun. Ha, kan? So, it, of course, yeah, once we start to ask ourselves yeah, about our status as supervisor, we keep like, oh, a lot of things needs to be improved. Yeah? Then, um, uh, of course, uh, we have to reflect yeah, we uh, from here. Yeah? Uh, I, we... Uh, Uh, we should reflect ourselves. Eh? Macam mana kita dulu dapat supervisor? Ya, Pengalaman kita dapat supervisor. Kita tak kenal pun supervisor kita heart to heart. Friend yang kita ada, kawan-kawan kita ada, our colleague kat office tu so kita kenal. Ya, Daripada mana dia, mak ayah dia macam mana, anak-anak dia macam mana, family macam mana. So we, we all know him from A to Z. But supervisor ni kita tengok nama dia. As long as match, match with our area, yeah. So we just choose. <laughs> kata apa? Tawa kata Allah lah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but okay. Um, uh, everybody has your very valuable experience, yeah. Untuk pilih supervisor. Saya nak tanya you all lah. You all nak pilih supervisor yang macam mana? Kalau diberilah peluang tiga tahun sebelum ni, yeah. Adakah You all pilih supervisor tu betul-betul supervisor yang you all nak. Ada tak? Berapa orang di sini daripada 23 ni memang dia dapat supervisor. The right, the best supervisor lah from the early. Dia letak nama, dia type nama, dia choose a name as supervisor tu memang the best person that he already choose. Ada tak kat sini? Ada okay. Siapa? Siapa? Right. Ada siapa yang nak berkongsi? Hmm, ada tak? Dah terim, dah, dah dapat tu terima saja seadanya. Bersyukur. <laughs> okay. Tapi kalau lah diberi, diberi pilihan ya tiga tahun sebelum ni lah. You all rasa macam mana? You all nak kenal dia dulu ke? Ataupun itulah cara je kita pilih je. Lepas kita hadap je sebenarnya. Itu ke? <laughs> sebenarnya macam tu. Hmm. Kalau oh, boleh okay. kan, memanglah kan kita nak yang apa, yang serasi bersama dengan kita kan. <laughs> Tapi kita lah kan, uh, apa, uh, uh, as we go along and kita kenal and uh, apa, tak kenal maka tak cinta kan. So kita kena belajar mengenali dan mencintai supervisor kita. <laughs> Itulah dia. Sebab kita tak kenal kan. So kita tawarkan saja kita pilih dia. Tu bagus tu. Maksudnya dah ready. Your mind, your soul. Your physical dah ready. Uh, Assalamualaikum Prof. Sadiki lah hati KK. Sadiki ya Dr. Sadiki. Uh, apa nama saya senang je. Janji supervisor tu. Hmm. He can actually laugh uh, with my jokes. Kalau supervisor tu serious saja, he cannot laugh with my joke lah. That one is a bit of a problem lah Ah, uh, My yeah. previous supervisor tu Alhamdulillah. Bila I buat joke. Dia dia lawak dia tergelak. Dan I rasa itu the 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 orang cakap tu the ice breaking lah. Oh cakap hmm. the first time we meet I buat joke sikit dia, dia, dia gelak. Jadi ah okey I rasa boleh masuk. Ah uh, okay. uh, and another criteria is uh, dia bagi kita space. Dia okay. tak dia tak control sangat kita. Okey ah uh, lepas tu dia kena faham. Okey when we went for PhD last time sebab kita hmm. family kan. So dia hmm. faham lah we are with the family and then kena ada give and take lah basically. Okay. Hmm. Ha, dan ada juga kawan-kawan saya yang dengan supervisor dia tu memang tak serasi langsung. Ada supervisor yang jenis buat macam style manager, manager kilang. Every time meeting kan. Semua kena tembak kan. Semua kena tembak kan. Ha, itu tak nak lah. Kan. Okay. Ha, ada. Ha, tapi saya saya punya supervisor Alhamdulillah. Memang saya sangat bersyukur lah. Ha, walaupun hmm. ialah, supervisor saya tu pada uh, dia dah duduk lama kat UK daripada mainland China. But hmm. he is very understanding. He, he is very understanding. Right, right. So, uh, macam mana Dr. Sadikin uh, pilih supervisor tu? Uh, actually, atas kenalan. Ah, uh, Ada staff FKKK, she came back from uh, UK. She did mm. her master in the university, University of Manchester. And then mm. I asked her about that lah. And then um, she recommended uh, a supervisor. Uh, my supervisor lah for PhD, Dr. Okay. Zeng Tauding. Okay. Uh, now dah professor dah. Um, I think he got his professor because of me. 
<laughs> because as soon as I got my PhD, he he was elevated directly to professor. So alhamdulillah jugalah. Uh, jadi um, I buat banyak jugalah solat hajat sebab I tak kenal di supervisor. I just look yeah. into this uh, by data from the internet, from the website, yeah. kan? What he likes, what he dislike. He likes to play ping pong. I know a bit lah. He likes to play badminton and ping pong. So I know a bit lah, kan? So um, so you you main juga badminton dengan dia ke? Uh, I tak boleh main. I dah ACL lagi tu. So I dah ada pencet. <laughs> Oh, ya ke? Setakat pergi minum apa, makan adalah sikit-sikit ah. kan. Ah, ah, kan. Okay, very good. Very good experience. But I play uh, ping pong and badminton before lah. So, I would say boleh masuk dalam conversation lah kan. Ah, right. Pasal kena-kena uh, kena well versed jugalah with the sports. Apa ni, yeah. current uh, kan, current issue in sports ke kan. Current yeah. apa tu, top player, ping pong mm -hmm. dengan badminton. Uh, baru boleh masuk. Bila masuk apa tu, um, every meeting, every Thursday kita ada meeting. Uh -uh. Thursday tu kita tak 100% talk about PhD. Yeah. Ah, sebab apa? Sebab saya ada sekali ni banyak pula saya cerita ni. Sorry prof eh mengganggu. Ah, uh, apa? Seronok uh, dengar. Actually ha. ada satu satu sekali tu lah. Actually in the first year I did actually not very good in my first year. Yeah. Ah, I, uh, I I I would say it was really bad. My first mm. year presentation it was really bad. And then mm. I got depressed. I got depressed. Mm. I still remember that December, that first mm. year December tu I got really depressed and I went to him I said I got really depressed. And then mm. I dah memang dah nekat dah. I nak quit. I mm. dah nekat dah I nak quit. Ah, uh, and then this supervisor, dia tahu I depressed tau sebab I punya muka dah lain macam masa tu. <laughs> so as soon as he he he, he, uh, he uh, um, apa tu um, he 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 meets me kan he saw my face mm. memang depressed gila. And mm. then um, he start talking about his journey in China. Dia pergi jalan sana, dia pergi jalan sini, dia pergi jalan sana, dia pergi jalan sini. Ha, kan? Dia cerita itu, cerita ni. Tak macam mana, from his journey, mm -hmm. I got an idea for my PhD. And then from mm -hmm. that idea, I'm telling mm -hmm. everybody, all my students boleh cerita ni. From that idea, mm -hmm. I got my PhD. I produce two papers. Yeah, okay. From that idea. Ha. Ta tapi wow. bukan daripada cerita PhD dia, daripada cerita journey dia pergi jalan-jalan. Oh, -jalan. betul, betul. Ha, betul. At that particular, mm -hmm. particular meeting. Ya. Itulah dia. Research, ilham. Research, ilham. Proses, ya. Yeah. Thinking. Ta tapi coming to my point, I rasa uh -huh. supervisor ni dia dia ada kena ada karisma. Hmm. Dia ada karisma. And one thing I can tell you about my supervisor, dia memang ada that little thing, that charismatic little X factor tu dia ada. Ha. Kena yeah. ada benda tu. Kalau tak ada benda tu, susah sikit. Dia memang... Yeah. Susah and empathy lah kot eh. Empathy. Ah. Empathy tu kena ada kan, kena tinggi juga kan. Ah, empathy. Oh, oh, sebab dia rasa ah. dia buat PhD mudah. Yes. Lah, kalau kita pun kan, our journey mudah tapi dia, kita hmm. expect kita punya student pun journey dia mudah macam kita. Hmm. Betul. Empathy tu kena tinggi. Hmm. Lepas tu satu lagi, my supervisor, he, he always say, okay, in your hmm. final year, I don't want to see you anymore after this. Okay, I want to kick you out next year. Ah, Itu another thing that he said to me lah. So, hmm. kena cari supervisor yang betul-betul nak gradekan kita. Betul? Ah, itu another thing lah. Kan? Ada supervisor ni dia suka simpan. Ada my friend dekat Universiti Manchester tu. Simpan je simpan kan. Sampai habis tak grad. Dia simpan. <laughs> Haa, saya pun tak tahu kenapa dia simpan. Haa, okay. adalah. Haa, itu je lah Prof. Terima kasih eh. Sorry ya, eh. lama sikit. Terima kasih Tadi Dikit. Aset, aset tu. Apa dia? Simpan sebab aset tu. Aset ni eh. Aset. Ah. Tapi kita, we should know as our right. Our right as PhD student. Okay, after three years, we should finish. Tak boleh. By hook or by crook, kita ada tanggungjawab kepada negara that we have to go back. Ha, itulah sebenarnya uh, yang kita kena bagi tahu ourselves lah. Supaya kita ni keep encourage ourselves to doing the best. Right? Uh, bukannya kita kata, oh lah, saya memang tak boleh lah. Tak layak lah. Walau memang dah habis. Aku ni macam mana research work aku tak bagus kot. No, 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 no. That is not because you yourself. But the thing is, kita kena tengok how much is the uh, load of your research work. Betul tak dah sampai ke PhD punya uh, scope. Ah, itu sangat penting. ya. Yeah? So, thank you very much Dr. Sudiki which is uh, quite um, apa tu, uh, inspire punya work. ya, yeah? Journey, PhD journey. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. ya. Yeah? Macam Dr. Sudiki kata, after one year tu rasa nak quit dan nak balik Malaysia. Tapi kena tak cakap pada diri kita. 
Boleh ke kita balik tanpa PhD? Sedangkan kita dihantar untuk balik dengan PhD. Ya. Oh, tanggungjawab kita kepada negara, anak-anak, bangsa. Ya. Itulah. After one year tu kena tanya pada diri kita. Boleh ke kita balik macam ni? It's not finished. Baru first year. Okay. Kalau lah ada di kalangan uh, sudah kita ya. That's why uh, emotion punya uh, apa issues is very important ya. Nasib baiklah apa uh, Dr. Sadikin ada bincang dengan supervisor ya. And then from there ada ilham. But that is the apa tu teknik ya. Yeah? Possible teknik that we supposed to create, uh, innovate. Uh, so that is, is also is a way refresh. The, 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 the thing is what we want to see is the, how we refresh the ideas refresh our uh, you know ourselves yeah so how do i choose a phd supervisor yeah for my phd uh, uh yang, yang dr sidiki bagi contoh tadi uh, he used to contact uh, his colleague yeah dapatkan apa uh, apa prestasi yeah bagaimana communication seseorang potential supervisor that is very important yeah uh, of course instead of the research match dari segi area, bidang, or, or so, uh, apa, um, and so forth. But the thing is, we should know in terms of expertise level. Dia ni memang boleh uh, graduate ke student ataupun tidak. ya yeah? uh, Boleh uh, apa tu supervise student ataupun tidak. ya yeah? Sama ada secara mudah ataupun susah ataupun senang. ya yeah? And then, uh, adakah that potential supervisor tu ada funding as well as the facilities to do research? Uh, right? Dan uh, our potential supervisor ni memang ada collaboration tak dengan community. At least the research community. Right? Dan macam mana dengan status of the previous student? Macam Dr. Sadiki kata tadi, uh, based on his colleague, dan his colleague pun baru graduate, dan his uh, colleague also uh, suggest uh, his name as the supervisor. Yeah? And then, uh, of course, uh, during the first semester, kita akan ada uh, talk dan meeting with our supervisor to see yeah, um, the, the, that means the credibility of our supervisor. Yeah? Di samping itu bolehlah kita review, review, apa, review asking yeah, uh, his uh, apa tu, existing students. Tanya what are the status, macam mana performance dan sebagainya. Yeah? Uh, dan uh, of course uh, sometimes it might spend few months in the lab. So kalau kita memang sudah masters ke, kita boleh observe yeah, uh, the uh, what we call it, uh, the activities yeah, by our potential supervisor. So this is like uh, what we what we call as flashback yeah, ourselves why we are choosing our supervisor. So this is also might happen to our potential PG students as well. Yeah, We keep being observed. Yeah. Uh, by our potential postgraduate students, right? Hmm. So, jangan berlaku, janganlah hypocrite. So, we have to show ourselves. So, uh, so from time to time, uh, we can improve, yeah? Whatever that we can see right now, uh, masih lagi ada kelumpungan, yeah? Masih ada bahagian yang masih, uh, yang yang perlu kita perbaiki, right? So, all right. So, this is, uh, that means the possibility of choosing the right supervisor lah, all right? So basically, uh, what we should uh, have in our mind, yeah, how supervisor perceives the supervision. So normally, the supervisor, yeah, we ourselves, this sebenarnya, yeah, ada perception. Yeah? So, so macam Dr. Munati kata, ada different school of thought. Yeah? So uh, the supervisor perception yeah, of own style of supervision, challenges and experiences. So that are, uh, that is supposed to be at the top. Yeah? Right, and then yang uh, that means the um, we also be surrounded by the practice, how we should practice, yeah. So we should know uh, who, what, when, and why, right? Uh, and then we also should understand uh, very well about the attitude and expectations towards the PhD student. Right, uh, so these are three basic things, yeah, from the pyramid uh, diagram here. So we are in the middle as a supervisor, right? So kita dikelilingi oleh, uh, you know, our uh, challenge, our, our, our style. So of course, um, uh, from our style too, ada challenge dan experiences lah, which is very, very much uh, valuable, yeah, uh, to to what we call it, encourage this, uh, our PG students, right? Okay. So, um, apa tu? Um, now, uh, back to the, uh, 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 as I mentioned just now, yeah, uh, as a supervisor, kita bukanlah 
uh, menjalankan apa tanggungjawab sebagai supervisor tu uh, you know uh, setakat ah uh, apa yang kita nak buat kita buat no it's not a freedom that's supposed to be a process ya yeah? so how does it start the process start it's supposed to be started by uh, receiving uh, a letter from school graduate study so uh, receiving the letter the appointment of supervisor okay so normally uh, it depends on the new state regulations yeah uh, as the principal supervisor or main supervisor yeah mm, of course uh, we are being yeah uh, uh, highlighted by our responsibilities in the appointment letter okay okay instead of main supervisor there is another uh, it's not second supervisor it's also can uh, call as supervisory committee so at least one yeah uh, but we may have more than one of the supervisory committee yeah and then uh, uh, of course here uh, dr muliati mentions that yeah instead of her supervisor the supervisory committee also play big role here ah the supervisory committee also commit yeah uh, with the main supervisor to supervise the student. This is very good example. So kita dengar kadang-kadang main supervisor has their own direction. The supervisory committee pula ada another own direction. So just imagine kalau ada tiga committee plus one main, so ada berapa? <laughs> ada empat kaedah. Yeah? So uh, it's, it's supposed, uh, susah lah ya. Yeah? It's supposed not to be happen lah. So that's why uh, there is a, a meeting. You need to have a meeting, yeah? every semester right so what, what what i can tell you that okay uh, we still need to uh, what we call it um, uh, follow through the university regulation yeah so we should remember and then we just uh, rely on the uh, highlighted responsibilities right and one more thing is in malaysia it's very important for us yeah, to be updated with the requirements from mqa uh, do you know, guys, what is the requirement from MQA to be a supervisor, main supervisor, as well as supervisory committee? You all tahu ke? Tahu kawan semua? Tahu ke? Ada yang terbaru? Tak. <laughs> Apa dia? Ya, ya. Macam tak. Macam tak. Sebenarnya ada yang terbaru daripada MQA. Eh? Yang terbaru daripada MQA adalah uh, Ijazah Sajana dan Kedokteran SMDD. Standard terbaru ya. SMDD uh, edisi kedua untuk tahun 2021. Ini after re uh, revision lah ya. So they come up with the standard Ijazah Sajana dan Kedokteran SMDD edisi kedua 2021. So it's quite uh, what we call it a comprehensive uh, reference, uh, uh, comprehensive standard. Yeah, macam mana? Yeah, so I just refer to the section of what we call it uh, appointment as the supervisor. Yeah, kalau masters dan juga kalau PhD, right? So kita boleh tengok lah uh, diagram ini atau figure ini. Yeah, uh, this is what I refer in lah. Yeah. Kalau masters untuk main supervisor, principal supervisor must have a doctoral degree. Yeah? And then when the principal supervisor has a master's degree in the field, the principal supervisor must have at least five years experience teaching and research. And, ha, dia buka atau, and yeah, has co-supervised master's candidate. The supervisors must go through such a supervisor training. Yeah, so the HEP Senate, I means the University Senate may impose other criteria it deems necessary. Okay, so uh, itu adalah untuk syarat main supervisor bagi masters. Kalau co-supervisor untuk masters, uh, co-supervisor must have a doctoral degree. Tetapi when the co-supervisor has only a master's degree in the field, the co-supervisor must have at least one year experience in teaching and research. Yeah, a course advisor from the industry or practitioner must at least a bachelor's degree and have at least five years of experience in the field at a level appropriate for the dissertation. Yeah, the supervisors must go through such a supervisor training. So the university senate may impose other criteria it deems necessary. That one very clear untuk masters. 
Manakala untuk PhD ya, to be a principal supervisor, that means main supervisor lah ya. So the principal supervisor must have a doctorate degree. And done, bukan atau ya. And have at least two years of teaching experience and research. Yeah, has supervised master's or doctoral research candidate to completion. Ha, ini syarat terbaru tau. Ha, you, you should alert ya. And then, where a principal supervisor has only a master's degree, extensive experience in research is required. In addition to conditions 1A tu adalah, ada juga 1B subject to approval by the Senate of the University. So, the supervisors must go through structured supervisor training. Dan, the University Senate may impose other criteria it did necessary. Itu untuk main supervisor. Manakala untuk co-supervisory committee bagi PhD research adalah, co-supervisor must have a doctorate degree. And then, where a co-supervisor has only a master's degree, extensive experience in research is required and subject to the approval of the Senate University. So, a course advisor from the industry or practitioner must have at least a master's degree at least 10 years of experience in the field at a level appropriate for the thesis. Yeah? So, the supervisors, supervisors must go through structured supervisor training and the uh, university senate may impose other criteria it deems necessary. So, in Malaysia also, we have a very comprehensive standard yeah, that need to go through, yeah, that need to, uh, what we call it, to um, comply lah. Ya. Yeah? Uh, kan? So uh, tak maksudnya tak susah tak susah. Tak senang jugaklah nak jadi uh, supervisor ni ya yeah? sebab ada main ada post supervisory committee sebab ada ketetapan standard. Right? So ini adalah untuk Malaysia. Okey. Ada soalan? Kalau tak ada lah ya. Yeah? So, saya apa uh, so, uh, uh, every university may refer to this standard lah ya. Yeah? Okey. Tapi boleh dibincangkanlah ya di peringkat universiti, right? Dan apakah supervisor stars, ya? Yeah? So based on our discussion just now, ya, yeah, yang kita dapat daripada kawan-kawan semua, ya. Yeah? So basically, um, uh, daripada guidelines yang ada pun, ya, yeah, berdasarkan kepada standard pun, ya. Yeah, so of course, kita di Malaysia, kita may refer to MQA punya standard lah, ya. Yeah? So we can actually... Uh, figure out apa yang terkandung dalam standard tersebut. Okay. So, of course, uh, kita punya task as supervisor, we have to recruit, recruit candidate. Wherever possible, yeah, our previous master students, yeah, or during the conferences, during the seminars, yeah. Uh, so, we may meet a lot of people, yeah. So, we may also meet the, uh, that means PhD or master's candidate, yeah. So, uh, we can actually promote, yeah, ourselves, promote the research area as well as the, uh, what we call it, the possibility, yeah, uh, job spec of, uh, you know, once they finish their master's or PhD, yeah. And then we also can uh, do something like plan the course of study, yeah? uh, monitor the progress. Um, uh, as a supervisor, we are uh, possible to modify the plan. Yeah? Even yeah, we are uh, the main supervisor, there is uh, still flexibility. Yeah? Wherever possible, we should have to know where to adjust where to modify yeah, the plan and then uh, at the same time as a main supervisor we should establish the research plan yeah in cooperation with the phd student this is what we call as the agreement the first agreement yeah once the phd student and supervisors uh, meet yeah uh, together so we have to establish a research plan properly Okay, so this is what we call a research plan. But again, there is a possible to be adjusted or to be modified. Yeah, and then once everything put in proper place, then you can start to supervise the research. Yeah, from the day one, yeah, until your PG finish. Yeah, so again, yeah, our task is not only supervise, yeah, uh, but we have to understand yeah, throughout his findings that is very important. Yeah? 
uh, so the, the, the tactic here is that how to actually uh, uh, appreciate his findings, yeah? Because everything might give, uh, you know, might be put in proper place. So where to put it? In the thesis. Where to put it? In the paper that's supposed to be published, yeah? Uh, so uh, this is the way that how... Uh, critical it is how crucial it is in terms of guiding the students yeah uh, ask him to prepare ask him to write ask him to submit to us okay and then our job is to go through everything from a to z right uh, so uh, we also need to know yeah um, the capability of our pg yeah is it enough for him or she to go through, yeah? Uh, let's say uh, for PhD three years, master two years. Is it enough that she can, uh, she or he can have a good literature? So we should uh, search for that particular course, yeah? Uh, as well as scientific writing uh, to equip him or her, yeah? With a good writing skills, okay? As well as language training, of course, lah. If it's come from uh, Timur Tengah, from Asia, Yalai. So, uh, we, they, they are also struggle. So, we have to equip them properly. Yeah, I, I guess that I believe that at the university level also have this kind of pro language program. Okay. And then, um, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the next one is about the time management. Yeah. So, so the time management is very much important, yeah. Uh, because the doctor said, apa, uh, our doctor Sadikin tadi sebut, yeah, the his supervisor telling him that I don't want to see you anymore next year. Ah, it's very good, yeah. That's your cook dah tiga tahun, you kat sini. You can go back. So, that is a challenge for us. Maksudnya, tak habis-habis lagi ke, right? Uh, so, this is like uh, two ways lah, yeah. To what we call it to to reflect our job, yeah, our research scope, yeah, our findings, yeah. So to ensure the completion of the thesis, yeah. At the same time, to ensure that the work is published, yeah. Itu tugas kita sebagai supervisor to guide, yeah. At certain uh, year, of course, our students have findings, yeah. And then, are we thinking of to publish that findings, yeah? So once we uh, publish the finding, it's maybe established, yeah? Jangan takut, yeah? Ngawin masa tiga bulan, enam bulan. So that is us, uh, that means uh, it's supposed to be ourselves lah, to find, yeah? Go to the very much easier journal first. That means in terms of screening, in terms of reviewing, yeah? That is step by step, yeah? So that if, if it is the first findings and go to the, uh, you know, uh, the easier ones, that means the basic journal first, yeah? Don't go to higher ranking, yeah? So uh, this is also kind of motivation. Macam mana kita nak motivate ourselves? Bukan nak kata kita tak pandai, yes? Of course, kita dah banyak, ada berpuluh-puluh Q1, Q2. Bukan nak kata kita tak pandai, kita tak powerful. But the thing is how we guide our student. Bila kita guide her or him, yeah, we started the basic one, dia pun akan rasa motivated. Dia akan rasa focused. Okay, uh, after this first finding, I will go, go to the second finding, which is much more complex. Yeah. So, dia dah ada expectation from in his mind that dia kena buat banyak lagi. Dia kena buat banyak lagi penilaian, you know, uh, in terms of testing, in terms of validation, Banyak lagi complex things that he need to do, right? Uh, so this is like, you know, uh, time management, okay? So that is all about the, uh, what we call it, uh, about the supervisor task, yeah? Ada, ada soalan lagi? Supervisor task ni? Saya tak setuju lah dengan supervisor task ni. Ada ke? <laughs> so dah ada awak surat kan? Macam mana boleh kata tak setuju, right? Ada ke? Okay. Ada? Tak ada? Okay, oh, ada soalan ni? daripada rakan-rakan uh, akademik UTEM. Ada tak? Assalamualaikum Prof. Salam. <laughs> ya, Prof Rabia. Apa khabar ni? Apa khabar? Alhamdulillah sihat. Itulah, lama tak jumpa. Kan, sangat. Sangat. Dekat dua dapat dengar suara pun dah tahu dah. Alah. <laughs> Ini dekat 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 uh, UPM ke dekat Melaka ni? Dia kena minta Dr. Mulyati belanja ni. 
<laughs> UPM lah program dia. <laughs> Kok mana dah tahu online daripada UTM? <laughs> UPM. Okay, okay. Prof, Prof nak tanya lah Prof. Macam um, I'm sure that you uh, well knowing knowing Prof uh, Zuraiti eh satu dunia kenal. Ya, <laughs> sama je lah. Kadang-kadang kita ni dapat uh, students kan different apa orang kata tu? Different background. Eh? So uh, kalau fresh student memanglah we can uh, simply maksudnya kita guide uh, fresh student, fresh grad kan uh, uh, macam anak-anak kan. Eh? Tapi hmm. tiba-tiba ditakdirkan Allah kita dijodohkan dengan you know uh, uh, apa uh, student <laughs> yang um, student yang yang H. H eh dan 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 juga um, mungkin sambedi, yeah. uh, kan? Um, so kadang-kala maksudnya antara nak cepatkan the process of uh, graduate on time mm-hmm. um, dengan um, uh, nak pastikan whatever that yang mereka, mereka lakukan tu uh, fulfill uh, the 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 quality of uh, PhD tu. Yelah, um, um, it, uh, katakanlah kan, uh, of course bila orang besar-besar ni dia kata, oh yang ni my staff uh, boleh buat. Contoh-contohlah kan, contoh. Sebab dia kata saya ada software engineer, saya ada gini-gini. So, as supervisor tu, apa ayat sesuai kita nak bagi nasihat? Uh, ataupun sebenarnya kita bagi galakkan. You know, because of kan dalam situasi yang kita nak pastikan dia bergraduate dan hmm. dan... Uh, dalam masa yang sama, uh, we need to make sure that he actually know um, what his PhD is all about and they went, to, uh, they go through um, the process of uh, apa orang kata tu? Uh, learning dalam PhD tu. So, so kalau Prof uh, apa nama itu boleh boleh share lah from your experience. Okay, Prof Ravi apa banyak experience kan dengan H punya student, student kan? Ha, itulah. Ha, betul tak? Prof Rabia ramai kan student yang apa yang age Tak adalah ramai, saya rasa Prof lagi ramai <laughs> Okay Seben- Saya sekakat macam bilangan tu masih lagi satu number lah Ya yeah. Seben- oh. <laughs> Sebenarnya macam ni lah Kita ni kan, kita kita kalau kita menyelia the on ni Itu saya kata tadi, at the, the, the early slide tadi Seolah-olah kita foresee them as our junior tau our junior in terms of the PhD or master scope tu lah kan. So kita ni sebenarnya what, dah obtain PhD so at least dikatakan dalam ni adalah 3 years PhD. So consider as the other pengalaman 3 tahun minimum right. But the thing is bila lah macam-macam ragam of the PhD candidate ni sebenarnya akan banyak mematangkan kita because yang saya mention that is uh, because kita juga melalui learning process. Asyik fikir macam mana nak go through ya. Yeah? Sebab masalah setiap orang tu berbeza-beza dan kompleksitinya berbeza-beza. Right? Dan uh, dan masing-masing tu ya. Yeah? Masing-masing mereka tu ada kelebihan tersendiri. Ada yang cepat, ada yang slow. Ada yang tak tahu apa-apa. Jadi uh, the, 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 cha- the challenge kat kita tu ya yeah, adalah untuk kita maksudnya we have to tell ourselves kan oh kita pun tak tahu macam ni. Eh? Macam mana we have to tell, to, to find out. So of course our clique dekat faculty also mainkan peranan especially our seniors kan. Uh, our uh, pro, apa senior professor tu sebenarnya uh, banyak juga uh, yang advice kita uh, macam ni lah saya pernah ada sudah gini gini so dia 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 will tell us lah sometimes ya yeah? so that's why because kita dekat university as a center of knowledge ya yeah, sepatutnya kita sendiri pun uh, rasa sangat proud because di kelilingi kita tu adalah ramai mereka yang telah melalui pengalaman cukup Kok banyak dan pelbagai uh, pengalaman which is valuable to us yang kita ni masih lagi baru ya masih lagi muda ya jadi uh, pada saya lah Pro Rabia uh, kita boleh bagi tahu sebab kita kat universiti pun kita masih lagi uh, apa tu berpandukan kepada ketetapan uh, school of graduate studies dekat universiti so katakan the finding is uh, from our student so they should understand because at the end of the day pada mereka adalah defending the thesis ya yeah? 
Jadi uh, kalau dia tak buat betul-betul daripada sekarang, bukan daripada kerja dia. Dia memang ada duit yang banyak untuk outsource. Dia memang ada ramai staff. Tetapi kalau diri dia sendiri tak boleh nak defend the thesis, ha, itu adalah sebenarnya uh, merupakan uh, final decision lah sepatutnya. Ha, saya akan cakap macam tu je, Pro Rabia, for my students. Uh, katakan dia nak habis cepat, tapi dia ada orang nak siapkan untuk dia. Saya kata, you have to think yourself. Adakah you boleh defend your thesis as your own novelty job? So, nanti bila you nak explain, kalau orang lain dah buat simulation or those things, somehow you akan stuck. Yeah? Saya dah memang banyak berdepan dengan kes-kes macam ni. Dan bila you stuck, you tak dapat defend thesis. Yeah? In fact, you tak boleh nak cakap pun. You kena revive, you kena resubmit. Dan yang paling unfortunate is, ya yeah, dah kerja lama you tiga tahun tu, you fail. Ha, itu itu sebenarnya adalah um, apa mahasabah session kita dengan pelajar lah bila kita find out kita go through after one year ke kita nampak dia macam uh, still dengan uh, apa dia tegasan firm dia nak teruskan ya outsource tanpa dia sih kita boleh tahap kita, kita boleh lihat tak perlu uh, kalau sudah kita tu memang uh, tahu kerja dia buat sendiri kita memang tahu so that kita pun boleh uh, differentiate yang mana akan GOT yang mana yang akan finish PhD kan so kita boleh tahu sebenarnya bro ala itulah itulah asam garam lah <laughs> kan betul tak Keprah itulah tak sebab tadi your your sentence pun dia kata based on your uh, your experience kan jadi saya saya sangat Tabik lah. Ni kira macam mentor ni. Mentor saya ni. Hello. And and tadi just now you mention on supervisor committee. On my experience uh, memang pun committee is very important. On 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 my side um, saya banyak macam buat inter uh, apa nama interdiscipline uh, study. Yeah. Jadi orang uh, di KS tu salah seorang lah daripada committee dalam my supervision. So mm. kalau uh, beliau tak setuju jadi saya tak boleh kata apa dengan student lah. So dia kena convince that committee. Uh, so uh, yang itu, I, I do agree with you lah. Committee is very important. So mulai hati dia buat-buat malu lah tu. <laughs> okay Prof, thank you, thank you. Thank you Prof. Okay, so basically uh, itulah kita, itu supervisor task baru sebenarnya. Banyak lagi kan sepatutnya uh, supervisor. Itu itu adalah asam garam sebagai supervisor lah. Kalau relate kepada soalan Prof Rabiah tu dah memang advance sangat dah. Jadi kita tak naklah menakut-nakutkan junior-junior kita yang baru 3 tahun obtain PhD. Don't worry about that. You may uh, go through it dan you akan dapat experience. Dan experience bagi setiap you punya uh, PhD student tu may Memang pelbagai. Dia bukan satu yang sama. It's not stereotype. Dia akan apa tu uh, different type of uh, apa, perangai, uh, background dan sebagainya. So kenapa kita diamanahkan untuk teruskan tugas kita sebagai uh, apa? meneruskan tugas kita untuk menguruskan supervision. Why supervision? Kenapa kita perlu juga apa involve with this supervision? Ya. Yeah? Itulah yang seperti saya mention tadi, ya, yeah, uh, university sebagai central of knowledge, ya, yeah, perlu ada satu effective working relationship, ya, yeah, antara supervisory committee dengan our PhD student, ya. Yeah. Itu bukan kerja seorangan, ya, yeah, bukan kerja main supervisor bersorangan, ya. Yeah. Inilah yang dikatakan sebagai teamwork, uh, ya. Yeah. Teamwork which is involved with supervisor dan supervisory committee. Dan kalau ikutkan kita punya ketetapan mana-mana di Universiti di Malaysia based on MQA at least kena ada seorang ya uh, sebagai supervisory committee. So it might be two ya yeah, main dengan supervisory satu jadi dua orang lah ya. Yeah. Dia tak boleh seorangan untuk you apa tu uh, supervise your PhD ya. Yeah. Dan kalau ada lagi ramai For that particular area, lagi bagus ya. To to enrich the knowledge as well as the uh, skills and experience lah. Untuk bagi apa, very in terms of uh, what we call to support the findings ya. Okay. So uh, of course here, doctoral study requires high level of interdependence ya. Kalau kita dapat PG, contohnya uh, PhD student kan. From the first year lagi kita nampak dia tak boleh nampak apa-apa. Slow kan. Ya Allah budak ni, interdependence langsung. Maksudnya, apa, dia memang depends kat kita je. Tak independent langsung. Ha, macam mana tu? Kita tak nak dia. Boleh ke kita tak nak dia? Boleh ke? Kita tanya. Kita tanya kawan-kawan semua ni. Boleh ke? 
nak saya tak kita nak tak nak dia kita nak apa kita nak buang dia <laughs> saya nak bina dia sebagai our student boleh ke ada tak ah, eh, tak, tak boleh lah prof saya pun dulu tak pandai prof supervisor ambil sedih je <laughs> ah, kan tak boleh kita kena ingat diri kita dulu masa kita buat PhD dulu kita ni sebenarnya bagus sangat ke tak pun kita tak tahu apa pun pun kita main apa orang kata bentam je nak buat PhD kan kononnya kan sebab dihantar diamanahkan sebagai human resource dekat universiti mesti ada PhD kalau nak jadi pensyarah sekurang-kurangnya so during that time kita rasa kekurangan kita kalau kita flashback our time PhD kan jadi bila dapat student yang memang sangat-sangat rely kat kita we have to find out the way lah macam mana nak pastikan dia be independent at the first place Ah, okay, so dia akan me, apa, uh, that is a challenge for us lah. Macam mana nak pastikan dia independent. Kita boleh test one step by step lah sebenarnya ya. Yeah? Which is, kalau the first master tu pelajar kena ambil kursus ya. Yeah? So, uh, of course, uh, one of them is the research methodology punya course lah. So, kita, we can see from that particular course ni, sudah kita tu manage tak to go through that course ya. Yeah? Dia boleh, dia boleh score tak? Dia boleh go through from the class ke tak Frog because the first master uh, pelajar kena LR. Uh, ada tak dia, kita boleh tanya dia, ada tak dia gain something from research method class let's say. Yeah? Uh, so at least we can uh, what we call it train our PG step by step. Yeah? Kalau boleh rasanya susah, kalau macam ni tension aku ni tak boleh GOT. Don't worry about that. Yeah? GOT ni is a matter of award sahaja. Ya. Yang penting adalah knowledge. Ya. As long as pelajar kita boleh dapat new knowledge, kita pun rasa Alhamdulillah lega. Ya. So that is the first one lah. Ya. So the second one is appropriate guidance ensure smooth and successful completion. That is the thing. Ya. Jangan duk seronok sangat. Eh hey, budak ni dah dah lembab slow. Macam mana aku nak dapat GOT ni ya Allah kan. Mesti dapat award lah. Dapat naik gaji. Kalau ada lah kan. <laughs> Atau dapat promotion ke whatsoever lah ya. Tetapi kena ingat ya. As a supervisor kita memang dah ada tanggungjawab untuk pastikan kita mesti guide dia. Guide itu adalah asas utama. So guide tu mestilah to ensure smooth. Kita tak nak lah first semester literature lagi, second semester. First semester started with literature. Second semester literature review lagi. Third semester awak macam mana apa funny awak? Literature review lagi. Fourth semester literature review lagi. Takkanlah macam tu. Sebab kita ada guideline di universiti ya. By first semester, untuk first semester sudah kena achieve apa. Second semester sudah kena achieve apa. Tak semester sudah kena ada first finding katakanlah ya mesti ada ketetapan mesti ada guidelines ya uh, di universiti so we have to make sure that we comply to ensure guiding him or her smoothly hmm. ya yeah? kokak-kokak macam mana apa at least dia buat dia teacher ya yeah? kokak-kokak macam mana at least dia nampak apa the outline of research proposal at least ya yeah? Uh, toward the successful, successful completion. Kita nak make sure dia dapat ilmu tu and then dia boleh, uh, dia boleh uh, <laughs> completion. Tak tahulah dah terkeluar <laughs> from Arabia. Maksudnya kita apa, that means by hook or by crook lah ya. Yeah? Somehow we want to make sure that dia finish ya. Yeah? Uh, and then the third one is a mentor will help you passage into academic life and career. Inilah kita ni bukanlah sebagai bos ya. Sebab, uh, supervisor ni is not a boss. Okay, saya nak awak siapkan literature. Bawa literature you. Mana literature you? Ha, sudah ber, apa benda literature ni kan? Ha. Sekian semester, saya nak tengok you dah ada uh, research proposal. Okay, uh, macam mana ni student tak diberikan pendedahan. There is no exposure. And then kita just ask him. Uh, to come with that. So uh, as a supervisor, kita juga mentor ya. Yeah? After we guide him, we appropriate a, a task dan sebagainya, uh, kita nak make sure that dia boleh go through lah. Uh, Circumstances that dia boleh uh, uh, apa tu, uh, um, hadapi ya. Yeah? All those kind of uh, challenges. Right? Sebab kita lah sebagai senior. Our student is junior. Masih lagi baru ya. Asam, asam garam dalam uh, PhD punya uh, 
task. Okay? So is it clear yeah, about why supervision? Okay. Uh, so kita ni senior dan we have to guide them. Itu tugas kita lah. Yeah? Kita mentor, we are not boss. Yeah? So, uh, of course, dalam masa, dalam apa, bila kita membicarakan tentang uh, uh, guide supervisor, yeah? nak guide student macam mana dan so forth, ada pula datang, supervisor saya tak guide saya langsung. <laughs> Sudah datang. Sudah terjumpa, so, uh, supervisor saya tak guide saya. Tak pandai pun nak guide. Mesti kita tanya, student, habis tu macam mana dia guide you kalau you kata tak pandai? Uh, maksudnya kita boleh berbicara dengan student apa sebenarnya dia nak, ya. Yeah? Dia maksudnya itulah two ways communication. Maksudnya kita sepah mengajar dalam kelas, kalau kuliah ke, kalau kita mengajar, kita akan dinilai oleh pelajar. Betul tak? Begitu juga dengan uh, apa PhD proses, ya? postgraduate ni proses uh, akan ada ya uh, apa tu two ways communication. ya Sama ada setuju atau tak setuju. ya uh, So from there we can improve. ya Bila ada student datang, dia kata dia tak faham langsung. ya Dia tak dapat buat ni, buat ni. So kita akan reflect ourselves. Adakah kita tak cukup guide him? Okay, the first thing. Because we are senior. Ada tak, adakah kita buat ni tak cukup? Uh, so no matter what, bila kita dapat identify. Ya, ada masih lagi lompok di mana-mana so that kita akan uh, apa tu identify uh, where to send him macam mana nak mantapkan lagi ilmu yang dia perlu tambah right so basically ya, as a supervisor biasanya lah ya doing supervision ni uh, normally ada three type of supervisor style it's very general ya yang pertama ni dikenali sebagai doctor helpful So kenapa uh, adis uh, supervisor ni ya yeah, is helpful because always nearly nearly lah <laughs> bukan sentiasa nearly always available ya yeah, will come to group and offer help ya yeah. uh, dia akan dapatkan student dia akan call student dia akan communicate student dia akan tanya student dia kat mana stuck macam mana nak tolong offer help okey itu dah dikatakan sebagai helpful okey yang kedua Professor my way, partly available, but always suggest a different approach because I'm the expert. I know everything. Yeah. So whatever I ask you to do, please do it. Yeah. Ah, jangan apa uh, bertanggung tanggung. Okay. So this is what. Uh, prof, uh, sorry, interrupt sikit. Yang untuk yang first tadi tu, helpful mm -hmm. tu. Uh, mm -hmm. Kalau kita kategori tu setakat mana, level mana yang bantuan yang kita perlu bagi. Adakah okay. adakah kalau macam uh, contoh dia start on algorithm kan? So kita tolong buat algorithm kat dia ke ada contohlah. Tapi setakat mana? How far kita boleh yang kita supposedly to uh, help student? Okay, thank you Dr. Riza. Uh, macam mana Dr. Riza apa tu uh, entertain the student yang datang dekat Dr. Riza nak tanya pasal algorithm? Adakah Dr. Rizal terus buat? Eh, tak, tak. Biasanya saya tolong framework dia sajalah. Dia punya framework dia. Ya. Ha, tapi saya, ha. tapi ha. maksudnya saya nak tahulah setakat mana yang yang kategori untuk helpful apa ni uh, supervisor tu. Adakah hmm. sampai kita kita tolong bantu buat algoritm uh, itu consider student pun suka kan happy so dia kata ah, very helpful. Uh, okay. ah. Betul. Kita kita researcher, kita sebagai researcher kan back balik kepada definition researcher kan. So it involve learning process, it involve uh, what we call it combination of ideas dan sebagainya. Yeah? Uh, of course it started with the framework lah kalau algorithm tersebut. Tetapi how much we should or what we call it, help him or her. Of course sebagai kita dengan anak kita contoh ya uh, apa uh, analogi ya. Macam mana kita nak ajar anak kita adakah kita asyik Uh, apa um, tunjuk dia straight away ya kita tahu ya kat mana yang kita boleh tunjuk kat mana kita boleh buat kat mana kita nak tunggu pada dia buat CV betul so that pengalaman ya that pengalaman effect pun effect pengalaman kita dalam kelas ya uh, dalam kelas biasa ya uh, bila kita diberikan apa homework dan sebagainya assignment uh, kita pun buat okey dan kita akan pergi jumpa lecturer ya that particular lecturer dan sekiranya kita start dan kita kita akan diberi tunjuk ajar ya yeah? uh, so contohnya kalau uh, apa tu sejauh mana kita nak bantu pelajar kita of course we need to see ya yeah, uh, what is their response kat mana 
uh, dia punya uh, orang kata um, uh, status of response tu sampai mana how much adakah 20% adakah 30% adakah 40% so it will actually uh, 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 we call it, we may guide our students uh, uh, accordingly lah kalau tak percent maksudnya dia belum dapat lagi apa yang kita nak so of course A lot of effort kita kena tunjuk lagi kat dia. ya. Yeah? Tapi bila kita cakap sekali dia datang kat kita dengan 80%. Wow dengan frameworknya, dengan ready algorithmsnya. So kita just validate betul ke tak mana, betul ke tidak. Ada kita tengok programming dia macam mana kan. Dia dah code macam mana, dia simulate all those things. So kita boleh identify. ya. Yeah? Itulah apa Dr. Riza ya. Yeah? At least pada kita. Sebab kita target is the benchmark at least. ya. Boleh tak pelajar ni buat re-implement the existing work. ya? Ha, itu kaedah yang 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 standard. ya. Normally kita akan tengok student kita, student ni faham ke tak is that dia boleh tak re-implement the existing one at least. ya. So kita boleh lihat dia punya skills, dia punya kelebihan, ya. Ha, dia punya kelemahan, kekurangan from there. Boleh Dr. Rizal? Boleh, boleh. Thank you, Prof. Okay, okay. Alright. Okay. So, uh, this is doctor have bukan help for every day. Tak ada duit 50 bagi. Tak ada duit 100 bagi 100. Tak ada duit 1000 bagi 1000. No, not not uh, that particular uh, method sebenarnya. Ya, yeah? Helpful ni in terms of kita boleh combine the ideas. This is research. ya. Yeah? Uh, so, kita, we have to combine all the mind yeah? in terms of uh, discussing, in terms of uh, criticize. Uh, the, the, the ideas. This is very important. So this is considered as helpful. Yeah, at least the student, the PG student, has been guided. Yeah, to foresee what's supposed to be the outcomes. Yeah. Okay. And then second is uh, Professor uh, Maiwe tadi yang kita kata uh, jangan kata dia je betul. Uh, yang lain tu salah buat macam ni, dapatkan macam ni, exactly macam ni. Yeah. Tapi tapi dia partly saja available. Yeah. Kadang-kadang nak dapat dia pusa. Yeah. Okay. And the third one is uh, <laughs> Professor Never Here. Okay, where he's very hard to shadow. Nak jumpa susah, nak discuss susah. Email pun tak pernah dapat. Message pun tak pernah dapat daripada supervisor tersebut. Yeah? Jadi, rasa-rasanya kita dalam kategori mana? Kategori satu ke? Kategori dua ke? Kategori tiga? Hmm. Kita ni kat mana? Hmm. Kita mestilah Prof, ha. kalau, kalau saya boleh share lah kan ha? Mungkin rakan-rakan lain pun boleh share juga hmm. uh, Saya actually mungkin akan jadi ketiga-tiga kategori tu <laughs> uh, It depends on how actually the student react Or how the student respond to the needs of my my needs And juga dia punya needs lah So mm -hmm. being very helpful saya rasa at the beginning of the uh, study should be good mm -hmm. Because di sinilah kita nak rapport dengan dia Then maybe we want actually a okay, great rapport nak, nak bantu dia and so on mm -hmm. So it's come bila dan bila along the way Bila kita dah nampak ada a few uh, drawbacks on the student Bukanlah kekurangan tapi macam yang dia perlu bantu Then kita akan cakap okay now this is what I want you to do ha. Itu yang saya selalu cakap dengan student saya I need you to do this It doesn't mean that saya nak benda tu. But you have to do this because I know at the end of the day, you akan dapat macam ni. And this is my expertise. I believe that when you follow me, ikut je lah saya cakap apa. Kalau tak faham, senang saya nak, 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 kata nak ajar lah kan. Okay, then when it's come never here, ah, bila dia sendiri pun tak ada bagi feedback. It's more like kita tak mengajuk lah. Kita tak, kita tak merajuk. Tapi it's like it's payback time for him or her. Ha, kita dah cakap, ha, tapi selalunya when it's come to never hear ni, kita jangan prolong lama-lama lah. Within one or two months should be good. Ha, ada, ada student saya yang macam tu. Saya senyap je, dia buat, dia dia, dia bagi salam ke WhatsApp, saya pun tak tahu. Orang kata buat bodoh je. Ha, jadi tiba-tiba dia datang. Dia ketuk-ketuk. Kata mulia hati, ha, cakap apa sah, tahu marah eh. Ha, then dia bercerita balik. Then kita kembali balik yang ke nombor dua. So this is how actually I see the student lah. The student of mine. Because saya pun dulu begini. Saya pun dulu begini. My supervisor used to treat me not this way but but I, saya rasa itu mencukupi. But somehow saya tak boleh samakan diri saya dengan student saya sekarang lah. 
Okay, especially when I'm dealing with adult student. Eh? Um, yang jauh pula, yang ada di Palestin, yang ada di Syria. Oh, memang susah, Prof. When it's come to adult ni, memang susah. Kita tengah buat webinar ni, tiba-tiba kita tengok dia senyap aja. Rupanya dah tidur. Letih, kesian. Eh? Kesian. Jadi, sometimes tu saya rasa kesian. But so at the end of the day, saya rasa I will, I will be these three parts of types lah, Prof. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay. Because itulah kita kata sebagai supervisor style, kan? So it depends, yeah. It depends. Uh, kita nak jadi macam tu bila ma bila keadaannya, ya. Yeah? Keadaan yang sesuai untuk jadi macam tu. Of course dalam kes ini kalau boleh kita nak jadi yang helpful ni dengan anggapan bahawa student kita tu lancar, very smooth. Ya, yeah, dia nampak dia punya outcome supposed to be done by that particular semester. Jadi kalau kita nampak dia berdisiplin, dia bagus, ya, yeah, kita akan jadi helpful lah. Kan? Tapi kalau kita tengok student kita ni, ya, <tuh> tak tahulah ya. Second semester pun tak nampak lagi, diri pun tak nampak, kan? Mesej pun tak jawab, ya. Kita pun macam apa, mula tertanya-tanya, adakah dia betul-betul berminat untuk teruskan dia punya PhD, ya. So that is the things lah yang very challenging dan memang seperti mana kata Dr. Muliati, we can be in apa, that particular distance lah, ya. Tapi very hard to schedule tu, janganlah kita penalize lah ya. Kita, kalau kita niat untuk jadikan sebagai lesson ya. Uh, so that is very good ya. So that the student boleh belajar ya. Bahawa at least ya, dia mesti kena kosak dia punya supervisor. Mesti ada communications. Kalau tak ada communications, macam mana that research work tu nak apa akan di Teruskan ya. Macam mana nak ada findings? Because this is a process. Research is a process. Bukan baking a cake. Ha, itu saya selalu nasihatkan pelajar saya macam itulah. Ya, kalau dia nak benda tu cepat ya. At immediate time. Nak habis cepat. Nak tulis cepat. Nak JOT cepat. Saya kata ini bukan buat cake. Ya, we are doing research. We have to criticize. Ya, we have to explore. Ha, something like that lah ya. So this is our self lah supposed to be. Okay. So. Kalau ni. Okay. As a supervisor, which one do you prefer to be? Yeah, some other. What student wish their professor would be like? Yeah, uh, we are going to get a paper accepted in Nature, and this is how we are going to do it. Ah, uh, bila student tu kata, bila apa? Bila supervisor kata, uh, <laughs> this is how we are going to do it. Yeah, yeah, blah 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 blah, something like that. Wow. So that means he are being uh, motivated. Yeah. And what <laughs> the other one is, what professors wish the student be like is, they ta, uh, the student tanya, by the way, I wrote a paper with you as co-author and it got into nature. Supervisor pula kata, wow budak ni tak payah hajar apa pun kan. Very, apa, apa tu, excellent lah ya. Yeah? Uh, jadi kita nak yang mana. Okay, <laughs> kalau buat sudah yang excellent, of course kita nak yang second tu, dia buat sendiri kan. Tapi macam tak ada apa-apa pula contribution sedangkan research tu mesti ada uh, kata uh, combination of ideas ya. Yeah? Uh, criticize and then put it proper place something like that ya. Yeah? So uh, this is like uh, you know uh, apa tu um, entertainment lah ya. Yeah? Uh, at least sebagai a senior okay. Uh, walaupun wala macam mana junior tu bagus sekalipun ya yeah? uh, as a senior we still need to contribute. Okay. Right? Boleh? Prof, just nak share lah sedikit experience yeah. saya baru-baru ni. Huh. Yeah. Uh, tapi bukan sebagai supervisor, cuma saya, uh, um, it's a lesson learned uh, for me jugalah. Saya, kita perlu ikut. Uh, supervisor ni uh, daripada top university juga uh, hmm. di Malaysia. Dan uh, top, is a top professor lah. She, she is a top, top professor. Yang hmm. saya um, ter, tersentuh, eh, mungkin rakan-rakan adik-adik dalam ni uh, boleh uh, ambil contoh lah. Eh. Bukan contoh saya, contoh kepada supervisor ni lah. Saya examiner. Jadi semasa saya dapat tesisnya prof, hmm. saya agak terperanjat. Uh, tesis daripada yang di, yang diselia oleh uh, seorang yang sangat saya hormati. Uh, dan uh, saya maksudnya dalam keadaan yang uh, takut eh bila kita kita tahu uh, eh macam kenapa uh, tesisnya begini ya eh? sedangkan supervisornya uh, seorang yang sangat saya hormati. 
Um, jadi saya ambil masa, saya ingat sampai tesis dia tu terkeluar daripada ring binding, bro. Um, sebab saya nakkan, uh, ap, saya nak cuba menghargai dan juga saya nak cuba because kita kita nak bagi ke, ke kita punya apa verdict tu adalah berasaskan kepada tesis pelajar tersebut. Betul. Um, jadi verdict, verdict sebelum viva kan mm -hmm. Jadi saya kata eh kenapa begini ya uh, penulisannya Kenapa sedangkan um, saya sangat kagum Saya sangat kagum uh, Selepas viva the first word daripada supervisornya adalah um, Saya mohon maaf kepada examiners uh, Saya mengakui kerana saya kurang memberi perhatian kepada pelajar sekian-sekian-sekian Allahu Akbar Saya masa tu saya rasa macam um, kalau saya lah boleh maintain saya punya um, cara maksudnya memohon maaf. Um, ni mohon maaf bukan mohon maaf kepada ni tau. Kepada examiner ni dia mohon maaf. Uh, dan saya saya pun uh, mohon maaf lah juga sebab saya kata takut saya emosi saya kan. So, um, eh, sebab kalau tesisnya memang tidak di uh, tengok dengan baik. Jadi kita sebagai examiner kita akan memberi keputusan yang ikut kita lah secara profesional. Tetapi uh, sedikit bila kita menghormati um, uh, supervisor tersebut, kita terlalu kagum. Jadi kita nak bagi yang profesional itu kita macam uh, timbal balik. Mungkin ada benda yang kita cuba nak cari kebaikan lah, kebaikan ketika Viva. Dan, dan uh, antara yang menyebabkan saya tukar Swiss berdik tu <laughs> apabila penyelianya memohon maaf dan mengakui memang tidak memberi perhatian kerana kesibukan. So itu je lah prof nak nak kongsikan. Ini top top sebut top top profesor ni yang sangat saya dan saya kira saya pun akan um, mengikutilah sekiranya berlaku kepada diri saya sendirilah. Tapi dia kata most of the student di, di, I mean the, the research semua okey. Tapi sebab presentable di, di, di dalam thesis itu mm -hmm. uh, menyebabkan kita berasa tapi selepas viva tu memang cantik lah cantik smooth. Alhamdulillah. Uh, itu je lah prof nak kongsikan uh, antara attitude attitude yang boleh kita kita apa fikirkan baik lah. Uh, itu je prof. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you prof Ramia. Yeah, yeah uh, this is the uh, uh, those experience lah bila as a standard examiner sebab kita tugas kita membaca thesis dan kita menilai based on the thesis dan bila lah uh, uh, of course itu adalah kerja pelajar ya. Yeah? But the thing is, kerja pelajar pun akan reflect siapa supervisor tu. Ya, yeah? especially supervisor tu adalah profesor ternama ya, yeah, sama ada lokal yeah, ataupun luar negara. Jadi bila kita dapat hasil kerja, ya, yeah, in terms of thesis, bila kita baca thesis, so kita akan menilai PhD work tu berasal pada thesis. Kalau lah thesis pun teruk, the first perception is to our, uh, that means to the particular supervisor ya yeah. begitulah sebenarnya the lesson learn is that our pelajar our PhD candidate ni sebenarnya membawa sekali seniornya supervisornya sekali dalam tesis tersebut jadi whatever it is ya yeah, whatever it is kita sebagai supervisor still kena pastikan the quality of the thesis tu adalah at the top yang sepatutnya tempat yang sepatutnya kalau tak sesuai belum lagi apa tak bagus tak qualified walaupun research work bagus jangan bagi sudah kita hantar jangan bagi dia submit ha, itu memang saya alami sendiri ya ha, memang saya bertegas dalam student saya menghantar thesis dikata dia nak bayar negara dia dah habis semua kerja tapi saya belum puas hati dengan dia punya thesis saya kata no no we have to go through properly very well so that The thesis itu memang cukup bagus untuk reflect the things that you have done. Uh, so that means kita dengan student kita lah ya. Kita dengan student kita kena pandai tarik tali lah at the same time. Ya. Yeah? Because dia akan bawa nama supervisor which is kita lah ya. Yeah? Dan, dan sangat penting untuk uh, both of us student dan juga supervisor to uh, maintain dia punya kerja sebab at the end of the day the thesis adalah yang akan di Uh, dia akan di-evaluate, akan dinilai. Okay, uh, terima kasih Pro Rabia ya. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, okay, uh, again ya, yeah, uh, 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 senior and junior, okay, they got to understand each other, they have to respect ya, yeah, apakah ketetapan ya, yeah, sebelum uh, you go through ya, yeah, the viva and so forth. So, 
Kalau dalam kes ini the quality of the supervisor. Kalau kita lihat sini ada empat quality. Yang pertama ability to talk well. Boleh pandai bercakap, nak bercakap kan. And then knowledge of the organisation. Ya, yeah? mesti ada knowledge about the organisation. Ya. Yeah? Seterusnya technical knowledge. Kalau knowledge of the organisation ni kadang-kadang uh, on all the standards, all the ketetapan pada universiti tersebut sebagai senior, sebagai supervisor, we should know that. Jangan meletakkan 100% terhadap our PG student. Mereka pun baru, ya. Yeah? Banyak learning process that they have to go through. Dan kita sebagai supervisor have to equip up to date the knowledge of the organization especially melibatkan ketetapan graduate studies okay and then uh, the third one is about technical knowledge that technical knowledge is about the on kata apa ya the knowledge throughout the research ya yeah? jadi kena tahulah what are the core or what uh, what what is the anchor work the anchor, the anchor paper yeah what is the core work so especially involve the benchmark of uh, all those things yeah then uh, the fourth one is about honesty kita mesti honest kenapa kita jalankan tanggungjawab sebagai supervisor eh? honest to our pg so our pg may appreciate yeah sebab kita honestly telling him that we are uh, you know, our KPI that we have to finish up them after three years. Okay, be honest, yeah. Uh, jangan hypocrite, yeah. And then yang kelima adalah ability to listen. Kadang-kadang our PG ni masalah dia tak adalah besar sangat. Very small pun sometimes, yeah. Tapi bila dia nak mencerita ni, jangan lah, okay. I'm very busy right now. Uh, can we talk next time? Uh, jadi... You know, we have to be empathy lah. We have to, uh, I must be a good listener somehow, yeah. Tak apa, kita bagi dia, okay, okay, I will give you 10 minutes, I'll listen to you. And then maybe there is no conclusion yet, but maybe uh, we should know what you are going to do next. Uh, at least something that uh, kita boleh share with him, yeah. Inilah dikatakan uh, qualities of supervisor lah. Dan memanglah from time to time, we ourselves as senior, to make sure that uh, this quality ni uh, should be improved. Saya rasa semua ada ya. Yeah? Di kalangan kita ni memang ada this quality. But the thing is adakah dia 100%? Adakah dia 50% or 20%? Okay. Dan ya yeah, sebagai supervisor. Okay. Uh, uh, these are the characteristics lah. Supportive, active. Uh, uh, expertise, yeah, good communication, enthusiastic. So, memang sangat penting. So, that kita boleh support our PG, guide him properly, assist him, yeah, uh, advise him. Kalau kita tak setuju, kita rasa salah, salah lah. So, advise him accordingly, yeah. Uh, then help him uh, dekat mana-mana yang kita boleh bantu, yeah. Alright. Uh, so, uh, basically, this is about uh, the, uh, what we call it, the why supervision, okay? And then, next is about who. That means who, supervisor's role. Jadi, uh, sebenarnya, ini adalah lagi-lagi uh, micro, ya, yeah, about the supervisor's role, ya. Yeah. So, basically, uh, kita kena tahu, once the students, so our PG to data register di universiti, uh, at least at the start, ya, yeah, macam mana nak suruh ada communication, ya, yeah, sama ada yang apa, secara physical ataupun secara online, ya, yeah, our first, um, that means our new students lah, ya, yeah, how to start engage with him or her. So we need to identify a good question, yeah, uh, to, to make sure that he understand him properly and he also can understand us. Yeah? So identify a good question, knowing what has already been done, anticipate when a problem will be too hard or too easy. Kadang-kadang uh, kita dengar apa tu, masalah tu, alamak, sakit kepala aku macam mana nak jawab ni kadang-kadang lah. Okay, so anticipate. Uh, macam saya cakap tadi ya, at the start ni kadang-kadang pelajar ni dia nak tengok kita. Boleh mendengar ke? Dia nak uji kita. Itulah kata sebagai senior ni kita diuji ya. Nak tahu kita ni enough ke tak ya untuk hadapi all those things. Uh, that one is at the start. In the middle ya, throughout the students, uh, you know, conduct the experiment ya. We, have, we need to watch over the bigger picture. 
Ya, maksudnya from the first semester, second semester, third semester, in fact dia sekarang buat di second year, fourth semester. Okay, kita dah ada hati dia cakap sepatutnya dia ada dua finding tapi satu finding pun macam agak-agak tak validate lagi. So far, jadi, jadi kita, we have to see in the very bigger picture. Apa sebenarnya kekurangan pelajar ni? And then what should we equip her or him? Yeah? Uh, that means we have to give her the direction. Kadang-kadang dia tak nampak. So we have to assist him. So identify common pitfalls. Kat mana sebenarnya dia punya failure? Dekat, dekat mana sebenarnya dia punya loopholes? Yeah? And then uh, keeping an eye on the clock. Ya, yeah. maksudnya from time okay sekarang dah minggu ke-13, minggu ke-2 uh, apa minggu ke-7. So half of the semester. Student so, macam tak jumpa lagi kita. Senyap sesenyapnya. Okey. Hmm, apa yang seharusnya kita buat? So keep an eye on the clock for the first semester. Tengok. Uh, first week, second week, uh, third week. Okey. Kalau third week masih lagi senyap, okey and then uh, call him, message him. Ya. Yeah. Ni kadang-kadang kita minggu ke-5 ke-6 baru teringat kan sebab nak isi borang, sabit borang or those things. Jadi uh, that is the thing last in the middle. So at the end, telling uh, okay, the, uh, the student need a supervisor that can tell him when to stop. Tell him. So we have to tell him where to stop. Kalau dah ada tiga findings tu, dah ada tiga uh, journal Q1, Q2, Cukuplah. Tak payahlah simpan lagi. Oh ini budak ni bagus ni. KPI ni nak jadi profesor ni kena tambah lagi dua lagi ni. Q1. Katakanlah. So kita simpanlah student ni. Okay. So I think that one we have to be very very sincere lah ya. Because for the sake of uh, his PhD sebenarnya dah habis. Dah cukup. Enough ya. Uh, so kita boleh bagi dia untuk stop. So Supervisory committee will decide, okay, all right, so done, your PhD done, so you can uh, writing, uh, uh, complete your writing out and then you can submit. Knowing what a thesis looks like, all right, anticipate problem areas for the viva, yeah. So that's why kata Dr. Muliati hari tadi, uh, sebelum viva, akan ada MOOC viva. Uh, ini sangat penting. Sebab saya ada dengar, ada juga pelajar yang memang tak ada pun MOOC viva. Bila tanya MOOC viva, what's that? Okay, what's that? <laughs> it's not because what's that? What's that? Because we already equip you with the apa, seminar, ya. Kalau dekat peringkat school of graduate study, memang kita sediakan seminar, ya. Uh, kita equip them with the seminar. Bagi mereka expose macam mana to uh, to get into the viral warfare. Macam mana keadaan viral warfare sebenar macam ada uh, and so forth. Jadi, sebagai supervisor, kita mesti sebenarnya take care of him from the day one until to the Uh, day uh, tiga tahun tu lah ya At the end of the day Dia submit Maksudnya dia uh, Go through the viva Okay Boleh? Semua? Boleh? Boleh boleh insyaAllah right. Okay And then uh, Seterusnya Supervisor's role Tadi adalah uh, Supervisor's role Yang ni adalah uh, Okay uh, Saya tambah sikit lah lagi ya uh, Ini kalau ada uh, itu kadang-kadang kita punya hubungan ya kadang-kadang kita rasa kita dah put it proper way ya tetapi somehow uh, ah yeah, uh, ya ada yang tak balance lah masa kadang-kadang kita rasa ah tak apalah kalau budak ni memang tak boleh let go lah biar ajalah dia nak dia tak nak habis biar je <laughs> tak kita ada perasaan macam tu ya alah lemah sangatlah budak ni dah kali berapa kali cakap tak faham faham dah lah bahas in English pun tak faham kan ni susah ah biarlah dia tak nak habis tak nak habis lah Is it a good uh, apa tu uh, attitude lah yang kena ada pada kita kalau macam tu? Kita lontar kepada you all ni. Kalau ada student kita macam tu, better to let him go ke macam mana? Let it go. <laughs> Mereka let him go. Bila dah dia macam tak tak perform. Kan dah puas sebut dari supervisory committee, advice dan bagai. Tak dengar-dengar juga kan? Kita mentang lah diri. Duit banyak, tak serius, tak ada disiplin. Nak, tak nak habis, biar je lah. Biarlah dia, dia tak habis dengan sendirinya. Ada tak persepsi kita macam tu? Kita sini lah ni. Ha. Ada tak? Beyond our limits. Ada tak? Maksudnya, ah lah, biar je lah dia habis macam tu lah. Dia akan terminated tersen, dengan sendirinya. Oh. <laughs> Itu bukan salah supervisor. Atau supervisory sebab dia dah terminated dengan sendirinya. Terkeluar pada sistem dengan sendirinya. Ada tak macam tu? Ramai tak? Ramai tak? Ramai kan? Ramai kan? Ramai prof. 
Ada okay, juga. Ya. <laughs> Kalau saya boleh kongsikan rasanya ada ada a few lah yang macam tu. Tapi uh, apa-apa pun saya rasa is berbalik-balik kepada pelajar tu lah prof eh. So hmm. kita as a supervisor saya rasa we have done our best. We have done our best. Mungkin ada yang kata at the end of the day tu sampai jadi fed up lah. But for myself saya uh, belum sampai ke tahap tu lah. Okay, tahap merajuk tu ada. Tahap marah tu memang ada. Okay, uh, but I'm not sure about the rest. Macam mana yang rakan-rakan akademik yang lain? Macam mana? Mungkin ada pengalaman ke ataupun mungkin boleh uh, jika saya lihat ni ramai juga eh. Yang yang saya nampak dah ada ramai dengan. Prof Rabia macam mana? Sedia keluar sendiri. Macam mana Prof? Pelajar yang tak perform. Pelajar yang tak perform. Saya macam ni lah Prof. Um, student tak perform saya di, dari segi uh, maksudnya memang fresh uh, yang tak perform fresh graduate dan yang tak perform uh, kerana kerja um, yang tak yang maksudnya yang um, student macam student ni um, sampai satu tahap saya fed up sebab dia dia tak berkata benar dia kata dia busy, dia busy tapi rupanya um, uh, uh, apa, office kata uh, dah bagi cuti belajar tapi uh, still lagi office panggil tapi saya refer dekat office, office tak panggil rupanya so so jadi at the end um, dia minta berhenti lah Prof dia minta berhenti lah uh, hmm. jadi saya kata nak buat macam mana kan dah minta berhenti so jodoh sampai kat situ lah tapi ada juga kes yang mana uh, dia senyap, senyap, senyap. Yang ni memang syahdu lah. Saya um, dia senyap. Uh, dia, dia very energetic tapi suddenly dia senyap. Uh, lepas tu kita yang um, apa um, uh, uh, follow tapi uh, suddenly dia senyap juga. Lepas tu saya saya tanya dekat tempat kerja oh rupanya um, dia apa diagnose dengan sakit. And then suddenly dia, sakit tu makin tapi masih lagi nak uh, sampailah ke akhir hayat dia tu dia masih lagi nak buat. Uh, so dia meninggal masa um, saya ialah eh under my supervision lah. Uh, but mostly um, uh, dalam sepanjang saya jadi supervisor ni um, ada tiga orang yang critical yang mana satu berhenti sendiri yang satu tu sehingga saya sendiri menawarkan untuk membantu menulis prof. Kerana Um, uh, beliau ada ada isu uh, family matters. Ah uh, so saya tak tahulah saya kategori supervisor yang uh, di perkotak katik kan ke ataupun sebenarnya um, uh, tapi yang yang kita sampai ke tahap itu bila kita melihat memang yalah kalau kita diletakkan dia uh, diri kita di tempat beliau so macam mana eh? um, tapi kalau ada ketikanya kerana Uh, bukan masalah tapi kerana dia uh, ada satu kekurangan, inferiority uh, dari segi penulisan dan sebagainya tu yang tu memang uh, saya mohon kepada bantuan-bantuan um, uh, apa uh, penyelia daripada social science lah uh, uh, yang, yang 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 seperti itu tetapi ada juga yang maksudnya dia lebih kepada um, ego Uh, maksudnya uh, uh, he has his own way. Jadi kalau kita nak cakap tu dia punya defensif dia. Um, so saya biarkanlah, saya biarkan sehingga um, uh, dia rasa uh, dia discover yang oh actually dia ni terlalu terlalu uh, tahapnya tu terlalu langit, uh, kan? Um, uh, so yang itu kita serahkan kepada panel penilai lah. Uh, tetapi kita akan pastikan the quality lah. Maksudnya sebelum dia submit tu at least memenuhi minimum quality. Uh, saya agree dengan Prof nak nak kata masalah yelah. Because uh, on my part dulu masa saya buat PhD, one thing about my supervisor, uh, saya ada dua penyelia Prof masa di di Sheffield tu. Uh, the first one memang dia sangat fast dan dia terus cakap um, uh, most of my students akan habis empat tahun ke lima tahun. Ngeri kan? Dengar kan? Dan um, you know uh, jenis supervisor daripada Cambridge pindah ke Sheffield. Jadi dia memang very ni kan. So kita pula tahu macam alamak kalau dia kata dengan student yang standard biasa 4-5 tahun. Jadi saya yang luar biasa mungkin 6-7 tahun. 
um, ataupun mungkin 10 tahun. So kerana kerisauan uh, masa tu kan takut bayar hutang banyak dan sebagainya tu saya cepat-cepat switch supervisor. So saya, saya dapat yang memang fresh uh, graduate, dia baru dia baru habis PhD, baru 2 tahun. So I'm the his second student. Tapi dia maksalah yang tipikal English maksudnya um, kalau bukan native speaker pada dia English semua salah. Hmm. Ah, so so I have tapi one thing uh, dia sangat maksudnya dibantulah contohnya SPSS I still remember dia bawa saya sebelah-sebelah duduk sebelah-sebelah belajar SPSS dia yang ajarlah. Ah uh, sebab dia kata Rabia eh, yang ni saya tak tahu lah dia, dia put in word sindir ke memang betul. Rabia saya tak kisah student tak pandai asalkan rajin dan juga you honest to me. So jadi saya rasa saya dalam kategori yang dia cakap tu lah. Saya rasa lah saya rasa. Uh, saya tak kisah. Dia selalu ulang yang ni Prof. Saya tak kisah student tu tak pandai Rabia. Tapi memang saya dibayar untuk memastikan student daripada tak pandai kepada pandai. Asalkan rajin. Uh, I mean of course lah saya translatekan bahasa Malaysia tu Prof. Uh, <laughs> kalau bahasa Inggeris dia tu dia macam uh, masuk ke jiwa tu. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, because of that, saya pun bila saya nak ambil pelajar, I don't mind sampai saya cakap kat pelajar, um, saya lebih suka kalau you you rajin, pandai tu bonus. Hmm. Uh, tapi kadang-kadang penatlah pula kan nasib kita je dapat yang tak terror kan. Uh, sebab kita mengaku saya siap. Uh, so, so so yang ini, uh, I mean cara macam mana lah uh, uh, your creativity. Tapi Alhamdulillah dia rezekikan Allah ada juga yang da- yang memang macam saya katalah bila dia terlalu ni dia nak, dia ada dia ada uh, dia own stand kan. Kalau kita kata begini dia kata begini. Jadi kita biarkan dia ni cuma kita apa uh, bawa dia ke jalan yang lurus lah. <laughs> <laughs> kan? Sebab uh, yang itu je lah Prof. Eh? Right, Mungkin right, kalau boleh okay. membantu. Okay thank you Prof. Uh, memanglah kan uh, hubungan apa kita tu saya kata tadi definition tadi uh, research uh, kita senior, sebagai supervisor senior dan pelajar kita junior right so kita memang ada uh, insan ya uh, apa hubungan kemanusiaan ya masih lagi relevant ya between re, uh, senior and junior begitu juga sebagai manusia ni dia vulnerable sebenarnya kan kerja okey kerja tak okey uh, so uh, macam mana nak handle tu based on the principle kan Mesti honest kan, uh, mesti rajin, uh, disiplin. Uh, so no matter what, kalau you buat betul-betul, uh, you akan dapatlah benda tu kan. Jadi yang, yang saya nak highlight ni vulnerable lah sebagai manusia, sama ada senior ataupun junior. Sejauh mana professor you are pun, you still have those kind of uh, apa tu, uh, uh, attitude lah vulnerable. Kadang-kadang kita uh, mood okay, kadang mood tak okay, kadang busy sangat tak sempat nak tak, tak boleh nak brain. Ya. Bila tak boleh nak brain, <laughs> so kita tak apa, tak entertain. Bila kita tak entertain, uh, barulah apa tu akan ada apa miscommunication pula. So that's why uh, time to time kita keep lah uh, improve sama ada ourselves dan juga our student lah. Okay. Dan uh, ini during the research process. ya. Yeah. Uh, macam saya sebut tadi, kita akan uh, guide lah our student. Uh, dan sekarang ni, uh, sebenarnya pro, apa tu program yang cakap, kalau kita dapat student yang okay, memang very excellent, ya. Katakan student tu memang uh, apa tu, okay. So that is where the mental role to come across. Sebagai mental, kita kena buat apa? Kita kena guide him. Kadang-kadang student yang datang, yang 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 yang, yang apa, uh, overseas ni, So kita ada different culture kan yang tu pula kita nak kena manage properly itu makro ya belum mikro lagi ya so these are the things that need to be take care lah ya sebagai apa tu mentor ya untuk guide them right okay dan supervisory committee tu sangat penting when it comes to quality dan kita nak walaupun macam mana pun kita kena pastikan supervisory committee tu mestilah berlangsung dengan baiknya tak boleh ada satu pihak saja maksudnya main supervisory committee tu tak ada peranan langsung tak boleh itulah tugasnya ketetapan dekat sekolah pengajian siswa zah nak pastikan bahawa uh, rule tersebut berlaku dengan baik ya jadi Bila ada pengalaman main dengan core dengan supervisory committee, dia akan sepatutnya memantapkan lagi ya research work pelajar dari segi findingsnya dan juga dari segi penulisan pelajar, right? Ha, itulah yang yang kita nak share lah ya. Okay, 
Dan biasanya bila student uh, PhD ya, yang kita dapat tu sebagai supervisor, kita ada our own expectation. So apa dia sebenarnya uh, supervisor's expectation? Ya, yeah? Kita nak student kita tu diligence, independence, reliable, creative, dedication dan juga contribute. Kita nak yang macam ni, elemen penting ni mesti ada. Ya. Yeah? Dan selepas tu yang bonus tu adalah uh, mesti ada ability lah untuk read and understand. Maksudnya dia punya uh, apa tu dalam konteks dia punya research work tu uh, dia ada this kind of ability to read and understand, analyze, ada conceptualize punya knowledge, uh, boleh fikir secara abstract, maksud boleh fikir jauh beyond the apa uh, beyond the, uh, beyond, beyond the uh, issue sebenar ya dan boleh berfikir independently. Um, boleh write it clearly, boleh concise, be concise. Sebab tak berapa kali ya, a paper yang sudah hantar, kita reject. Sebab, you know, uh, yang kita harapkan tu tidak berada pada standard yang sepatutnya. So, kita nak sudah tu ada ability to write concisely. Ya, yeah? itulah sebenarnya ada uh, apa, supervisor's expectation. Tapi, student's expectation pun ada. Dia nak, dia nak ni, dia nak supervisor yang macam mana. They expect the supervisors to read their work well in advance. Ya, yeah? dia bagi tu, terus boleh baca, terus boleh komen. <laughs> okay, jangan ambil masa seminggu. Ya, yeah? dia nak kita buat immediately. Be available when needed. Bila masa dia perlukan kita, uh, so kita be available. Be friendly, open and supportive dan constructively critical. Then what uh, the thing is uh, berdasarkan kepada finding research finding lah ya yeah? kena constructively critical tak boleh bantai ikut kita suka ya yeah? because we are doing research uh, so research mesti ada conceptual ya yeah? structured punya idea right so uh, then juga kita nak uh, the, our student to have a good knowledge of the research area ya yeah? sebagai bonus ke apa ke tapi kita nak dia ada knowledge ya yeah? then uh, the student have the structure Uh, dan apa tu boleh uh, so that dia easily to exchange the ideas. Maksudnya bila kita berbincang, uh, bila kita berfikir because this is research, the student easily can understand dan boleh exchange the ideas. Ya? Yeah? Hmm. Okay. Have sufficient interest in their research to put more information in the student's part. Ini apa yang dia nak pada kita ya. Yeah? And be sufficiently involved in their success to help them get a good job at the end of it all lah. Yang ni tu tak takpelah. Ya, yang tu sepatutnya kita dah completekan dia PhD tu. Uh, so kita dah menjalankan tugas kita lah. But this is the, uh, what I want to highlight here is the student expectations. Walaupun kita ada our own expectation, sebenarnya mereka yang memang datang untuk PhD ni pun ada dia punya expectations. Ya, yeah? that's, that's why kita kena perbetulkan at the first meeting, we have to put it in proper way. Okay, mesti ada agreement bersama apa yang dia tak jelas, apa yang dia perlu faham, apa yang dia perlu tahu, mesti ada mutual understanding antara student dan we ourselves as the supervisor. Okay. Boleh setakat ni? Alright. So, dengan siapa kita bekerja? So, researchers role, okay, adalah yang pertama mesti ada uh, apa tu knowledge untuk manage our role. So, managing the role. Jadi, saya memang panjang di sini sebab saya rasa saya, uh, saya believe that uh, setiap uh, universiti dia memang akan ada ketetapan ataupun guideline di mana para supervisor ya the supervisor need apa uh, manage ya mesti manage uh, mesti ada meeting sebab biasanya akan ada form kita kena fill up berapa kali kita meeting dengan student per semester okay for that particular semester uh, setiap orang ya kita kena input dalam sistem ya contohlah ya and then uh, mesti ada Uh, mesti being accessible uh, and then uh, giving guide, uh, family the standard expected to of rich degree, PhD ataupun master's tu. And then um, sebagai supervisor, uh, kita meminta ya yeah, written work as appropriate. Uh, at least uh, kalau ada comprehensive literature, kita akan minta pelajar tu come out dengan constructive criticism ya. Yeah. Dan juga in a reasonable time. So kalau findings pun dia memang kena ada constructive criticism. Ya, yeah? dan uh, mesti arrange uh, kita ada uh, apa tu student talk. 
Uh, mesti ada ya hmm, sama ada kita nak buat dia dalam bentuk uh, progress meeting ke uh, progress presentation biasa at the end of the semester uh, saya I believe that uh, mesti ada dalam sistem itu pelajar mesti present ya yeah? uh, di mana uh, supervisory committee we sit down together and then they will actually uh, comment lah give the input ya yeah? And then uh, ensure that the university code of practice for research tu uh, being uh, comply lah. Uh, biasanya uh, ada CAD, SGS, any sekolah pengajar siswa zah mesti ada code of practice for research. Yeah. So that one is considered is a PG handbook. So uh, normal, norm, apa? Uh, in general, uh, kebiasaannya kita akan sebagai PG uh, itulah sebenarnya handbook dia dia kena refer. Uh, dan sekarang ni ada PDF version pun di dalam website. Ya, yeah, so dia easily to refer. Dan uh, of course uh, pelajar ini mesti ada ya yeah, uh, pengetahuan ataupun uh, training tentang ethics, legal dan juga conventions lah yang dia kena uh, follow through. Begitu juga kita kena pastikan our student aware ya, dengan institutional level sources, advice ya. Kadang-kadang tak puas hati turun naik ke atas. Tak boleh sebab kita ada prosedur. So kalau sudah tak puas hati, ya, dia nak make uh, what we call it report ke whatsoever ke, uh, kita ada uh, jalannya di mana uh, mestilah go through the head of department, mestilah go through the department dekan pengajar siswa zah and then uh, dekan for that particular faculty so that semua orang tahu bahawa the students ni being really take care lah dan uh, kita sebagai uh, apa tu uh, dekan dan sebagainya uh, we should take care both of them sama ada uh, PG students begitu juga dengan supervisor so we should uh, hear from both of them Jangan sekali-kali hanya berdasarkan kepada satu pihak saja. Ya, so kalau kita perlukan set a committee ataupun panel untuk mendengar, ya, sekiranya ada sebab masalah, uh, itu pun lagi baguslah. Ya, okay, that one is the managing role as a supervisor. Dan uh, dan seperti yang saya sebut tadi sebagai supervisor kita ni adalah researcher, so kita kena uh, tahu juga macam mana nak manage role kita sebagai researcher. So researcher ni uh, kita mesti lah rasa seronok ya bila kita buat sudah kita buat research uh, dan kita rasa macam keep apa uh, looking forward apa sebenarnya finding pelajar kita kita dah bagi dia punya direction kita dah bagi research problem dan objektif kita are looking kita is looking forward to see uh, the, the finding so that's why we have to maintain the regular contact ya jangan biarkan dia senyap dan uh, lihat kepada inisiatif kalau problem A pelajar tak boleh solve, maybe we have we can divert into problem B, problem C dan sebagainya. Ya, yeah? dan uh, of course kena take care of the apa, safety ya yeah? bila buat eksperimen dan sebagainya lah. Uh, dan begitu juga relevant research techniques ya yeah? kita boleh identify any other suitable research technique kalau uh, the students to get stuck lah ya. Yeah? Dan a planning research project uh, which uh, achievable within a schedule. Kalau ada schedule, maksudnya kita dah plan dengan pelajar and somehow um, at the end of the semester, pelajar tak, tak boleh achieve tapi dapat result yang lain. So we can actually uh, divert ataupun uh, apa tu um, adjust ya yeah, for that particular finding so macam mana ya yeah, yang kita boleh uh, divert to that particular findings lah ya. Yeah. Uh, dan yang kelima tu maintain the progress of work. Uh, ini sangat penting ya. Uh, kita tak boleh biarkan uh, kalau pelajar tu stuck whatsoever. Uh, inilah diperlukan combination of ideas ya. Where the main and the supervisory committee uh, may sit down together and then they may suggest lah what to do dan sebagainya ya. Uh, decide uh, bila mana pelajar itu boleh submit thesis. So di, kita nampak di situ uh, there, is, there is a group of supervision. Bukan hanya setakat uh, main supervisor punya uh, decision semata-mata. Yeah? Because uh, it involve a lot of eyes. Okay? Dan juga uh, brain. Okay? Dan taking responsibility for their own personal dan professional development. Yeah? Uh, of course lah kadang-kadang macam-macam uh, pelajar ni uh, masalah dia. Yeah? Sama ada pekerjaan, financial, uh, family, staff dan sebagainya. So sebagai senior uh, kita boleh tunjukkan jalan. ya. Yeah? Uh, tapi yang uh, at the end of the day dia sendirilah kena uh, be creative. Yeah? Macam mana dia nak selesaikan uh, masalah tersebut. Yeah? 
dan uh, yang, yang paling penting sebagai researcher mesti uh, uh, cakna ya dengan uh, uh, institutional regulations dan juga policies ya jangan tidak ambil tahu mesti ambil tahu especially yang melibatkan polisi sekolah pengajian siswaza dari segi kemasukan pelajar visanya macam macam mana berapa lama pelajar boleh stay di sini kalau tak lulus macam mana kena apply visa lagi ke kalau habis visa macam mana all those things ya at least Uh, if we have that knowledge dia akan lagi memudahkan ya uh, apa tu um, kedudukan pelajar di sinilah ya dia, dia stay here lah okey so um, so how to how that means how tadi role ya tapi macam mana nak buat so how adalah uh, yang yang kita discuss tadi contohnya kita kena discuss discuss always discuss put it the matter in a meeting ya yeah, discuss and agree key issues right so kalau ia melibatkan uh, writing ya yeah, melibatkan uh, paper especially ya yeah, uh, mesti kita mesti uh, orang kata uh, appreciate ya yeah, kerja yang dilakukan oleh pelajar so mesti discuss properly in terms of authorship of papers ya yeah. and then intellectual property be careful ya yeah especially at the start of the project di mana kita dapat asasnya mungkin daripada our previous uh, PhD student ke dan kita minta student and uh, our new student untuk continue and try to see another perspective ya yeah? another perspective of research problem okay so uh, that one need to be discussed and agreed accordingly ya yeah? tak supaya kita tak ada salah menyalah antara satu sama lain this is very important kita masih lagi termaktub kepada intellectual property ya yeah? sebab semuanya melibatkan brain ya yeah? that's why kita kena uh, uh, apa tu protect carefully be proactive and arrange formal supervisory meeting kita mesti uh, uh, as a, apa uh, supervisor uh, proaktif lah ya yeah? kita akan tetapkan dalam satu semester berapa kali kita nak jumpa adakah at the end of the semester sahaja ataupun awal dan akhir ataupun awal tengah dan akhir okay so terpulang ya yeah? dan uh, prepare some work before each meeting ya yeah, to to see how can we focus okay for any possibility data yang uh, akan dapat ya yeah, uh, dapatan ya yeah, uh, or analysis dan sebagainya ya yeah. dan expect to receive feedback and criticism kadang-kadang uh, kita tak nampak ya yeah, uh, bahawa uh, our student also can give a good feedback kita nampak kita je yang tahu semua bagi senior jadi ambil peluang untuk benarkan dia ya untuk mendengar uh, dia uh, dia feedback as well as uh, criticism ya yeah? and then deal with the problem as they arouse uh, technically ke ya yeah? resource ke supervision ke ya yeah? uh, so so this is looks like uh, our uh, kata professionalism ya yeah? so uh, this is what we already been trained lah ya yeah? sebagai uh, supervisor ya yeah? pengalaman tiga tahun at least sebagai uh, why we are we are why we are doing our PhD tu uh, banyak membantu sebenarnya how to deal with these problems ya yeah? dan uh, of course setiap kali kita ada meeting tu mesti ada summarize ataupun remarks of the meeting then what is the target of the next meeting ya okay? itu adalah uh, kata uh, apa tu uh, managing supervision ya yeah? and then the most important thing is a mutual respect kita respect students, student respect kita, so senior and junior, ya. Yeah? Dan akan under understanding of the expectations. Then from there we can share commitment to the goal of research, ya. Yeah? To make sure bila kita ada persepahaman, ya, yeah, pelajar pun akan rasa lebih bersemangat, ya. Yeah? To ensure that a smooth partnership, ya. Yeah? Dia pun nampak ya yeah, supervisornya, uh, which is close supervise him, ya. Yeah? Bila kita ada close, uh, betul supervising him close partnership dia akan appreciate ya yeah, the apa uh, the uh, understanding tersebut ya yeah? okey so ada tak konflik bila nampak cantik ya yeah, semua dengan pengalaman kita tiga tahun ni sebenarnya uh, tak ada konflik ke ada tak konflik mungkin ada mungkin tak ada <laughs> okey so uh, this is uh, what we should do lah as a senior kan maksudnya kita kena Expect lah, memang akan ada lah conflict, right? So, what are they? Maybe lack of communication, ya? Yeah? 
kadang-kadang kita malah nak berbincang ya kadang-kadang kita tak alert dengan problem yang sudah uh, yang sudah hadapi ya kita sort research work lah ya kita kadang-kadang bila research work ni once the uh, we, we identify that is a uh, apa tu uh, a problem kita kena alert immediately so that uh, so kita have, we, we need to keep update uh, up to date kan Uh, so we have to uh, find another anchor, look into another perspective, yeah. Uh, maybe another technique, something like that, yeah. Then mismatch expectations. Kadang-kadang kita expect pelajar kita at least ada uh, ada contribution for each semester, yeah. Dan kadang-kadang uh, uh, pelajar tu dah cuba sangat rajin, sangat disiplin, cuba tak ada finding saja. So macam mana kita should be open lah, flexible. So kena sit down, find out what happened. Kenapa tak boleh ada findings? Kenapa menyebabkan tiada findings? Okay, so we should uh, sit together uh, main dengan strategy committee and then we have to guide lah the student. And then personality clash. Oh, yang ni lagi lah ya. Yeah. Macam mana pula ada personality clash ni ya. Yeah. Uh, sebab dia menyebabkan pelajar different background, different culture. Kadang-kadang kita cakap tu untuk menunjukkan kita firm, ya. Kita ni apa tu uh, tegas, ya. Tetapi ada yang menganggap itu sebagai uh, apa tu menidakkan dia punya apa freedom, berkatakan, ya. Uh, merupakan satu paksaan, ya. Uh, so this is personality, uh, mungkin ya personality clash. Kadang dia kata apa, prof apa? Prof tu ganas ya. Ganas. Ayat dia guna itu ganas ya. Sebab apa you kata macam tu. Sebab ya, itulah kata-kata. Dia nampak benda tu sebagai uh, apa, memperkecilkan dia. Merendah-rendahkan dia. Sedangkan itu adalah ketegasan. That pelajar harus uh, lalui dan harus ada dapatan. Mungkin lah ya. And then yang seterusnya adalah competing pressures ya. Uh, mungkin jugalah ya. Uh, macam mana ya sudah uh, supervisor nak pelajar tu habiskan ya GOT tapi pelajar mungkin tahu dia tak mungkin katakan dapat GOT katakanlah so maybe be honest okay be honest and then uh, uh, make sure ada mutual understanding so that uh, you can say okay as long as you have this uh, three outcomes you have these three findings Uh, you fulfill the criteria to uh, apa, to complete, uh, to graduate as PhD student whereby you have to uh, publish uh, two articles, katakan. Memang ada ada dalam regulations dekat sekolah pengajian siswa Azhar, katakan. So that, uh, this is our mutual understanding. As long as you manage to publish and then you, you dah comply syarat bergraduat, uh, so yes, uh, means that you can finish uh, something like that lah, ya. Yeah? So this uh, what we call it the conflict biasa. Ini very common ya. Yeah? Communication, expectations, personality, uh, compete, yeah? pressure, pressure. Ya, yeah, kadang-kadang sudah datang, kenapa? Kenapa nak tukar, kenapa nak quit, kenapa nak balik negara, kenapa fed up. Uh, so because uh, these four elements lah, uh, which is, which are very common lah. Ya, yeah? ada, 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 ada comment so far? Kelas? Kelas pula dah. Kan? Kelas pula jadi ya Allah. Sampai kami semua terkesima sebenarnya ni melihat yang orang kata you are really into it. Prof, uh, kita ada masa uh, dalam masa 10 minit je lagi Prof eh. So okay, mungkin boleh rapatkan. Sebenarnya ni uh, memang orang kata it's a very good talk eh, sampai saya hmm. sendiri pun Uh, tak perasan yang masa mencemburui kita. Okay, okay, saya pun rasa. Betul-betul. Okay, uh, uh, And then when things don't work. Kita memang ada tadi uh, COVID dan sebagainya. Tapi bila masalah ni masih lagi berlaku. Apa yang kita nak buat ya. Yeah? So the best thing is speak with the student in such an open minded. Okay. Bukan saya kata saya tak pernah alami. Oh apa yang saya cakap ni adalah pengalaman saya sebenar. So that's why bila Dr. Mulia Hati minta slide. Uh, these are the things that wherever I want to modify here and there, yeah. So, bila berlaku masalah, when problem arise, yeah, memang kita tak nak masalah tu pun. Sudah pun tak nak masalah. So, speak with the student in such open-minded. Okay, uh, maksudnya kena ada openness di situ, yeah. Tapi, if problem persist, speak to supervisory committee, yeah. So, kita dengar bersama-sama. Macam mana nak solve it out, yeah. If issue is still not resolved, okay, uh, boleh berbincang. Dari head of department, deputy of dean, ya. Yeah? 
so uh, somehow if all else fails remember both should agree and change supervisor lah ni kalau nak bertukar supervisor dan memang tak boleh nak cope mungkin uh, pelajar tu punya advantage dia kekuatan dia dalam bidang lain katakan so maybe dia minat dalam bidang lain so boleh tukar supervisor so buat penamaan semula so this is where we have the rules at the university level sebenarnya jangan uh, menjangan susahkan lagi bila dah ada masalah dia bagi susahkan lagi sepatutnya kita find out the way how to resolve the issues ya yeah? so katakan minat pelajar tu memang bukan minat kita ya yeah? dia minat benda lain so kita kena bagi jalan kat dia aturkan buat penamaan penamaan supervisor dan juga bidang okey alright so uh, the characteristics of i and ideal mentor ya yeah? Ini saya dapatkan daripada nature lah ya. So saya rasa semua ini akan jadi inspirasi kita yang kita katakan sebagai ideal ya. Um, maksudnya dia appreciate individual differences ya. Mesti ada availability, self direction, questioning. Always ada pada masanya kita boleh celebrate pelajar kita dah buat ada funding, boleh publish ya. Dan uh, build up a scientific or social community or networking ya. Dengan all the apa tu uh, research uh, apa professors academia ya yeah? uh, throughout uh, local universities ya yeah? dan kita ada inspira uh, inspirations criticism dan skills development tu uh, apa being uh, increase accordingly ya yeah? dan ingat mentor for life ya yeah? always keep ourselves enthusiasm dan juga always be sensitive ini adalah Uh, telah publish pun dan uh, characteristics yang uh, supposed to be ada sebagai ideal lah ini kita kata uh, apa uh, uh, ideal mentor ya tapi of course sebagai human being kita akan ada kekurangan di mana-mana but we can improve dengan niat kita nak uh, hasilkan pelajar yang uh, bergraduat ya okay so what is the important component of success okay kalau uh, uh, kalau Sahabat lihat semua ni kan. A tu diberikan nombor satu. Sebab saya ni kan suka numbers. ya yeah? Dan hingga ke Z tu nampak 26. Daripada sini lah macam mana agak-agaknya kita nak jadikan dia 100%. Apa kena ada dalam diri kita so that dia akan jadi 100%. Yang you all kata mesti bersifat apa apa open minded apa uh, mesti uh, boleh mendengar good listener empathy ya yeah? anda boleh guide student properly itu semua tu apa dia sebenarnya bila campur 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 kena, campur 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 kena keluar pakai kalkulator ni prof <laughs> <laughs> saya nak kira uh, bila you all campur 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 dapat hundred percent apa dia tu Sebab lambat dia nak mengira uh. Kalau ada boleh cuba Kita tak dapat 100 <laughs> Dr. Mulyati ada tak, tak sampai 41 je pula ni <laughs> Satu tu apa dia? Oh tak Sabar tu sabar sabar uh, Okay patience lagi uh, Sabar dengan keredah kan eh? Ah, uh -huh, patience. Okay. Lagi banyak tu yang baik-baik semua tu. Cuba dapatkan 100. Okay. Saya suka number sudah so saya introduce this one. Takkan doktor melihat si seorang je ke si ya doktor melihat si. Doktor Riza, mana doktor Riza? Ada 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 benda tadi mana? <laughs> ada ada. Tapi nak dapat 100. Ah, okey, patient 78. Okey. Nearly there, nearly there. Doktor melihat si. Sebelah, kena cari lagi ni. Okey, doktor ini. Nak seratus saja. Nak seratus eh. Hmm. Dia punya apa tu? Um, dia punya clue, clue prof. Clue. Apa dia? Clue, clue. <laughs> dia punya clue tu adalah quite general. Maksudnya general. Kita boleh interpret anything. Lagi susah. 
Susah tu Susah ya Okay tak apalah kita tak payah buang masa so, Masa pun mencemburi kita So saya bagilah jawapan dia Eh tak ada jawapan Next one I think you all <laughs> Apa? Sebab dah betul dah tu dah tertandung lah tu dalam tu Attitude kan patient Sabar Okay semua tu dalam attitude lah Tetapi sebenarnya kalau campur-campur-campur tu boleh dapat 100 So attitude yang baik lah attitude yang bagus lah kan Betul tak? Okay so that's why saya kata general lah very common lah eh? Okay boleh And then uh, how can ya yeah? Uh, the PhD experience goes wrong uh, Macam mana kadang-kadang bila kita identify eh, Tajuk tu very small scope, scope tu terlalu kecil Ataupun terlalu besar Maksudnya student tengok tu Tak habis-habis dia uh, Lepas tu kalau semua tu Tak cukup findings dia untuk PhD katakan ya Proposed research use no result uh, Tak boleh dapat result uh, So that's why kita sebagai mentor Mesti cepat nak uh, bawa into another perspective uh, Okay dan sebagainya Supervisor is not an expert in the field. Yes, I agree. As a researcher, we keep on the learning process. Every day, banyak sangat ilmu-ilmu baru yang kita dapat. So, we are actually uh, a learning process. Yeah? So, yeah. so, sometimes a supervisor is not an expert in the field. Kadang-kadang, uh, because somehow it's not matched. Yeah? It's not matched with the area that the student tu nak buat lah. Yeah? Dia nak buat A, student tu punya expert adalah B. Yeah? Uh, so that's why uh, dia mismatch lah. Yeah? Dan yang seterusnya adalah supervisory committee does not contribute. So at least in order to be a good mentor, uh, a good mentor we have to contribute lah. Yeah? Uh, somehow we need to know how to divert, yeah? how to adjust yeah? based on the findings right so uh, i think with that lah we go to the conclusion so it is very very uh, cru uh, crucial lah for us to understand that uh, supervisor and student relationship is very important yeah to make sure that our pg process delicate uh, and complex yeah memang yeah uh, throughout the timeline uh, phd and masters okay process is sangat lama sangat tedious sangat susah very complex yeah dan sebagainya so uh, sangat uh, so hubungan dia lah yeah <laughs> So, mutual understanding between supervisor and uh, students is sangat penting lah. Yeah? Uh, should be structured with regular recorded meetings. So, kena ada catatan so that we know what uh, we have been agreed. So, kalau ada sistem kan kita kena input dekat sistem apa yang kita dah pun agreed with the student. Yeah? So, as we committee dah pun agreed dengan pencapaian student. So, what next the student need to do? Yeah. And that requires mutual respect, openness and honest debates. So, kalau kita nak debate, that one is a based on the respect of the knowledge. Maksudnya, ada possibility that the findings can be improved more. Uh, so, this is where the openness comes. Yeah, Honest of debates come. Critical of the criticize. We criticize honestly. Yeah, And then, effective supervision is a two-way process. It's not one way. Yeah. Then, uh, of course, uh, ethics is very important. Uh, the ethics are supposed to be very good. Uh, we have to, uh, what we call it, uh, semai from the first master that the student need to be very, very professional. Yeah. So, his PhD work is supposed to be novel. So, it's not a uh, pelagian. It's not from other people's work, right? And then, nobody can effectively do multitask, yeah? Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, in this case, uh, we can do it, but it's supposed to be in that particular area. So, the scope tu mesti jelas. So, that barulah ada nampak. Uh, that means the the direction yeah, uh, to to finish up uh, the PhD ke, master's ke. So, it has been uh, what we call it uh, 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 advised or uh, guided accordingly. Yeah. Right, so with that, uh, thank you very much guys uh, here. InsyaAllah kita boleh jumpa lagi lah. Yeah? Right, so thank you very much Dr. Mulyati. Okay, terima kasih Prof. Zu. Terima kasih sangat-sangat atas uh, perkongsian yang sangat-sangat menarik, very fruitful. So kami di UTEM dan khususnya dari uh, Center for Academic Excellence and Scholarship KAIS mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih 
sekali lagi kepada Prof. Dr. Zuriati daripada UPM kerana sudi berkongsi ya pengalaman beliau dan juga pengalaman pengalaman daripada rakan-rakan yang lain the journey of supervisors ni okay, so how we can actually develop ourselves so sebelum uh, itu ada apa-apa pertanyaan daripada rakan-rakan uh, prof sedikit lagi ah ya. nak tanya satu soalan terakhir okey okey uh, sedikit rasanya okay. from from your presentation tu okey uh, it was a very good presentation terima kasih banyak saya rasa saya dah buat banyak dah benda yang prof cadangan tu macam-macam lah yang prof cadangan tu saya rasa kebanyakan tu saya dah buat Okay, tapi itulah towards the end of the journey, student MIA, missing in action. <laughs> ha, student MIA, because of COVID ni situation, sepatutnya student tu habis dalam masa tiga tahun macam tu. Okay, student tu tinggal, dia journal paper dah cukup, uh, conference paper dah cukup, tinggal nak tulis final chapter and viva saja. Lepas tu student tu lari. Up until now, dia tak jawab message. I cari address kat rumah dia, not valid. I pergi tau rumah dia dekat Kelang, not valid. And then um, I try a lot of ways lah in order to get in touch with her but somehow I couldn't get in touch with her. I try to get in touch through her friends hmm. pun tak dalan juga. Her friends somehow probably dia dah beritahu kawan-kawan dia cakap jangan bagi tahu apa dekat Dr. Sedikit. Uh, kan? Hmm. Uh, then I I couldn't get any information. Tak dapat. So I tak tahu apa nak buat. So apa, apa nasihat Prof kalau jadi macam ni? Okey, Dr. Sadikin, uh, memanglah uh, memang ada kes-kes yang student MIA lah ya, missing in action ya. Uh, of course, you have done very good job lah Dr. Sadikin. So, pergi jejak dia, trace dia ya, uh, to make sure that uh, dia ada bersama-sama ya, finish up his apa, kerja dia hanya sedikit saja lagi tinggal writing last chapter. So, you have done very good job. Uh, excellent. Tanya ya, yeah, Dr. Sadikin. But the thing is, when the student miss, missing in action is not our scope. Beyond our scope dah. Bukan dalam bidang tugas kita dah. Kita do our best to get him back. But the thing is, dia dah tak boleh. Mungkin ya, yeah, pada pada saat ini, uh, beliau berhadapan dengan pelbagai challenge lah. Sama ada sakit, ya, yeah, ada family, ataupun financial. Ini biasa cases-cases yang kita dapatlah. Uh, ah yeah? ya uh, berdasarkan pengalaman saya lah. <laughs> Okey. Jadi uh, dia kalau missing in action ni dia akan uh, dia akan pergi dia macam itulah. Dia akan hilang macam tu. Jadi uh, yang yang kalau percentage yang datang balik tu memang very small lah. 3% macam tu. So yang biasa akan datang balik tu uh, biasa oh sebab financial dia dah okey, family dia dah okey, dia dah tak sakit lagi. Ah uh, itulah yang saya sebut tadi three common uh, factors lah yang menyebabkan pelajar-pelajar uh, ni uh, MIA lah. Jadi so that uh, our uh, mutual understanding tu sangat penting uh, so that bila kita tahu dia tak dapat teruskan pun kita tahu sebab apa. Okay. Dan memang akan ada uh, timeline ya kalau dia tak register kalau di kalau di UPM lah kalau dua semester berturut-turut dia tidak register dan dia akan be terminated. So kita ada very good system that has been put in place ya. So that semua orang semua student mesti follow the system. Okay? Boleh? Okay boleh. Terima kasih. Sama. Sama. Terima kasih uh, Dr. Sadiki atas soalan. Dr. Rohana, ada apa-apa soalan nak diajukan kepada Prof. Zu? Ya, tak ada. Terima kasih. Uh, itulah itu yang angkat tangan tu. Lower, lower hand. Terima <laughs> kasih. <laughs> 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 okay, so. Okay, so. Uh, uh, angkat tangan so, uh, tu. Uh, angkat tangan. Terus. Apa? Nak, nak clap the hand tu. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Excited sangat. Terima kasih. 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 Terima dan juga orang kata um, ialah pengalaman beliau tentang uh, tajuk pada hari ini. So kami uh, di UTEM mendoakan kebaikan kepada semua rakan-rakan di UTEM khususnya para akademik uh, yang menjadi orang kata supervisor. Okay, uh, kita bagi saya uh, kita sebagai supervisor ni rasanya banyak kita kena korbankan lah eh. Jiwa, raga, masa eh Prof. Rabia. 
uh, dan juga khususnya kita kena banyak empathy lah empathy kepada pelajar uh, dan at the same time we should have our knowledge juga lah in order for us to supervise our student right, terima kasih Prof Zul dan rakan-rakan akademik di UTAN uh, kita jumpa uh, di masa akan datang Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh